Marcel. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. Yes. Hello. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the organizing committee, I cordially welcome the Honorable Principal, Midnapur College Autonomous, the Honorable Guest, distinguished invitees, my dear students, and the participants in the one day national webinar on development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during the COVID 19 pandemic. So, this uh, webinar is jointly organized by the Department of Physiology, Midnapur College Autonomous, in collaboration with the Physiological Society of India. So I am really proud and honored to host the prestigious event. I am highly obliged to the Honorable Chief Patron, Dr. Gopal Chandra Veda, Principal Midnapur College Autonomous, the member of the governing body of Midnapur College for their support in organizing the event smoothly. I am also thankful to the faculty members and support staffs of the Midnapur College Autonomous. I am also thankful to Professor Amor Chandra, Amor Kumar Chandra, the honorary president of the Physiological Society of India and eminent professor of the Department of Physiology, University of Calcutta. Professor Somnath Gangopadhyay, Honorary Secretary of the Physiological Society of India, as well as a professor in the Department of Physiology, Calcutta University. The guest of honor, Professor uh, Dr. G. L. Khanna, Pro Vice Chancellor at the SGT University, Gurgaon, and Professor Kushal K. Dhara, Professor Department of Physiology, C. B. M. Patil Medical College and B. L. D. E. University, Karnataka, for their gracious presence in this event. The recent pandemic of COVID-19 has drawn attention globally and the devastating nature of such pandemic has not been witnessed in recent past. And the estimated fatality rate varies from 2.2 to 3.8 percent. And the people of old age group and are having the underlying diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other major diseases are at high risk. So at present, there are no specific drugs or vaccines are available against COVID-19 infection for the treatment of the patients. And creeping on the social distancing and the sanitization become the only remedy to get rid of the COVID-19 infection. The government of India has imposed a nationwide lockdown in order to reduce the rate of infection. And in the new normal condition, some of the offices, business, and the transportation are open, but the situation has not much improved. During this lockdown period, people are facing uh, forced to stay at home, and which produces the physical, uh, reduces the physical activity and thus the level of fitness. In addition, the lockdown period causes a massive impact on the econ economic affairs. Many people, mostly in the private and in the unorganized sectors, lost their jobs. And this has created a mental health problem in many of the people. The physiologist has a role in development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during this COVID-19 pandemic. In view of this present situation, the Department of Physiology, Midnapur College Autonomous, in collaboration with the Physiological Society of India, has organized a one-day national webinar on the development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and we have some great personalities as the panel of speakers in this program professor prakash chandra dhara director dde and formerly professor department of human physiology uh, 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 in bidyasagar university professor boyjanti baur professor and hod department of community medicine midnapur college midnapur medical college dr montu saha scientist af and head of the department of exercise physiology at dipas drdo delhi and dr prasunno priyo nayak associate professor department of physiology aims jodhpur we hope that the participant will be benefited by the lectures of our resource persons and on the concerned topic in this webinar thank you all of you once again with this i request our honorable principal dr g c bera to inaugurate this program sir please Uh, good morning everybody on behalf of minapur college uh, i welcome honorary president of the physiological society of india professor amor kumar chandu professor of department of physiology university of calcutta honorary secretary of the physiological society of india professor somnath mangopadhyay professor of department of physiology in the city of calcutta guest of honor dr g l khanna Pro Fashion Seller at SGT University, Gurgaon. Special guest, Professor Kushal Kedas, Professor, Department of Physiology, CBM Patil, Medical College, DLD, Deemed University, Karnataka. I also welcome the distinguished research persons, Professor Prakash Chandra Dhara, Director DD, formerly Professor of Department of Human Physiology, with Community Health, Bidyas University, Professor. Bhujibanti Bau, Bau, Professor and HOD Department of Community Medicine, Bidyapur Medical College, Dr. Montu Saha, Scientist F, Scientist F, uh, and Head DIPS, DIDO Delhi, Dr. Prasun Priya Nayak, also Assistant Professor, Department of Physiology, AIIMS Jodhpur. In this one-day national webinar on development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during COVID-19 pandemic, I'd also like to welcome the teacher participants, academicians, uh, the patron of education, my colleagues, and last but not the least, my dear students. Minapur College, since its inception in the year 1873, has been inclined on imparting education in right earnest. In 22 honors and 14 PG subjects, apart from diverse diploma and certificate courses, and has become a premier higher education hub not only in the state of West Bengal but also in the country at large. As a mark of its academic excellence, the college has been conferred with autonomous status by EGC in 2014 and has achieved CP status in two schemes. The special status in 2015 is also a vindication to its peerless and commendable academic strength. The college has been reactivated by NAC in third cycle in 2017 and has claimed A plus with 3.60 CGPA, which is a commendable achievement for our institution. Needless to say, almost all departments vie with each other and ensure committed and diligent work to keep up the glory of the college, keeping in view of the profitable academic heritage of the institution. Seminars, workshops, special lectures, webinars are a regular feature of this college, like that of our, of which this one day national webinar is a testimony. I extend my sincere thanks to the honorable keynote guests and the research persons for accepting our invitation to join this national webinar of this college. The pandemic outbreak of coronavirus disease, COVID-19, has led to the to profound public health crisis. Individual with pre-existing conditions of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, renal disease, mental illness, 
and the elderly are most vulnerable to this infection. In addition to the share of disease, the national wide lockdown has a massive impact on this economic affair. The physical activity has been reduced as most of the people are forced to stay at home. Further, the loss of job, downfall in business, increase of cost of treatment of COVID-19 has altered the mental status of many of us as there is no proper drug available for treatment of COVID-19, therefore boosting immunity to proper diet, exercise and lifestyle modification may enhance the physical and mental wellness in this pandemic situation. Apart from the frontline medical person, the physiologists have a role in development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness being during COVID-19 pandemic. I hope that participants will be benefited by the enterprising and lucid analysis by our distinguished research person on their constant topic to the true spirit of the first area of the webinar and also by their acumen into their respective fields. I hope the deliberations which will be made will be of great worth for all of our participants and these discussions are a bonus to further research activities in this field. Before I recall, I'd once again like to thank all associated with this academic exercise for taking pains to contribute their valuable deliberations and active participation. I, on behalf of Minabur College in general and Department of Physiology and the Physiological Society of India in particular, thank you all for making this webinar a success. With these few words, I'd like to officially inaugurate this occasion before I end up. I'd also tell you that this intellectual exercise will reap the harvest for which it was daily intended. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Gopal Chandra Veda, for inaugurating uh, the, our uh, today's program. Now we have with us Professor Amor Kumar Chandra, Honorary President, Physiological Society of India, as well as eminent professor in the Department of Physiology, University of Calcutta. So he has the uh, research interest in the uh, in the area of thyroid physiology, molecular mechanism of uh, and the signaling pathway, endoepidemiology and reproductive endocrinology. We have uh, under his guidance around 24 people received the degree of PhD. He has completed 18 projects in his uh, tenure and he has published more than 100 uh, international and national articles in different international and uh, national journals. And he also uh, participated various conferences. He has received the Fellow of National Academy of Science, FAMS, and UGC Emeritus Professor. At present, he is a, a honorary president of the Physiological Society of India, general secretary of FIPS, and advisory to SAAP, and executive member of the journal of IJPS. With this, I welcome Professor Amosh Kumar Chandra and I, uh, request him to uh, few, uh, say a few sentences regarding our program. Uh, thank you. What do you, sir? Actually, you are listening to me. You are listening. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, Hello. yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay. 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 Thank you, Dr. Manna, for your nice introduction. On behalf of the Physiological Society of India, I welcome all of you in the national webinar on development and maintenance of physical and mental well-being during COVID-19 pandemic, organized by the Medinapur College Autonomous in collaboration of the Physiological Society of India. 
in this regard first of all i like to say that minnapur college is in the first line to give our response considering the situation i discussed with our general secretary that we like to organize some of the uh, webinar uh, and 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 we proposed a number of institute to organize the same but minnapur college autonomous has responded initially under the convenership of dr mangna and other faculties in this context first of all i convey my gratitude to chief patron dr gopal chandrabere uh, principal medipur college autonomous he not only helped in this uh, in this webinar but we have very successfully organized uh, the annual conference of the physiological society of india in 2017 i thank him much much uh, this webinar has been enriched by a number of dignitaries uh, as professor sunna gongopadhyay general secretary of psi e juidas uh, guest of honor professor gl khanna he is the professor chancellor of ac university uh, he has a long standing relationship with the physiological society special guest is a well known personality professor kusol kanti das he is the professor and dean bld team to be university and he is also holding the very prestigious chair of unesco in addition there are a number of resource persons who are very much reputed number 1 professor prakash chandra dhara he is presently the director of dde vidyasagar university he is a very pioneer physiologist uh, next to it it is a community based disease so uh, we on behalf of the college and on behalf on, on behalf of physiological society of india we have invited professor dr uh, boyjanti bau professor and head of the department of community medicine uh, minnapu college so we are too much grateful to uh, uh, to get this type of personality in this seven in addition dr montu sha he is a well known scientist he is doing research work on jugo and exercise physiology for a long time and i know uh, he is in this laboratory he is associated with us and lastly professor kushin pionake energetic young man um, possibly from minnapur college is also with us in addition i am thank thankful uh, to the coordinator dr indronil manna and dr shaktodeep samant for that almost all the faculties of the department of physiology medipur college of nomas are with us uh, as dr sudhamoy ghos dr bishwarup sarkar uh, dr sapol kandibera dr sujaya dev professor mudhumanti dapadi and um, professor konmoy ko so we are um, <coughs> nicely it has been presented nicely by dr manna and principal said professor bera about the in about the consequences now one thing uh, consequences of uh, covid 19 and how the serious we are feeling it from day to day even from moment to moment it has paralyzed our life almost completely and the good thing is that uh, in india uh, uh, the uh, the number of affected population and the severity is quite less because of the uh, indian food habit because of the practice of yoga and other else so the physiological society or the physiologist in the different uh, regions of the globe are trying their best to overcome it and in this consequences the effort taken by dr manna with his uh, team of experts to organize today's seminar uh, is much expected and it will not only help the participant but it also enrich us and it also make us more serious to combat against the disease i do not like to take much time with this i thank um, professor vera the organizing team 
our general secretary, Professor Gongopadhyay, the eminent guest of honor, Professor Khanna, special guest, uh, Kushal Das, and the speakers. Thank you all for your patience hearing. With this, I request you to proceed further. Thank you, Professor uh, Amar Kumar Chandra, uh, for uh, your wonderful speech. Now we request Professor Sumna Gangopadhyay, the Honorary Secretary, the Physiological Society of India, as well as Professor, Department of Physiology, University of Calcutta. Professor Sumna Gangopadhyay. A, uh, the professor and former head in the Department of Physiology, also in charge of the Occupational Physiological Ergonomics Laboratory in the Department of Physiology, University of Calcutta. He is also coordinator of Sports Science Department, University of Calcutta, and he has uh, the research interest in the field of ergonomics, exercise physiology, occupational health and safety. He has started his career as a ergonomist in the Steel Authority of India. He has uh, published more than 200 research articles in different national and international journals and uh, participated in more than 200 conferences. Under his guidance, many students, more than seven students, have uh, conferred the degree of received the degree of PhD. He has completed five projects and he is the honorary secretary of the Physiological Society of India and he was the treasurer and assistant secretary Indian Society of Ergonomics and presently the executive committee member of this society. And he has received many awards many awards including these the members in the FABMS uh, given by the Indian Association of Biomedical Scientists. He has been conferred with the fellow of Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors and he has received the Ramendra Sundar Sinha Memorial Oration given by the Physiological Society of India, as well as he also received the award of Professor S. Subramaniam Memorial Oration by the Indian Association of Biomedical Scientists. With this, I, with this brief introduction, I welcome Professor uh, Somnath Gangopathai and request him to say few something about this national webinar. Over to you, sir. Good morning to everybody. Uh, I think I am audible. So you know that uh, this is a uh, very nice morning when I'm invited in a webinar and which was uh, which is organized by the the great Mednipur College. You know the Autonomous. And we used to say the Mednipur College is the presidency is the, actually the presidency college of the Mednipur. And uh, I'm I'm as as my president already mentioned that uh, we are grateful that our invitation uh, taken by this Mednipur College and response they, they gave the first response to organize this webinar. And uh, also the topic, you know, the selection of the topic that is the development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during COVID-19 pandemic is a very unique and very pertinent topic uh, in this area. Because you know that uh, I want to share something about these uh, pandemic situations because this pandemic situation, in this pandemic situations, the, the, the uh, you know, that the, the, the side effect of the pandemic situation is nothing but the mental illness and the physical illness. And in which way we can uh, combat this physical and mental illness is a very important question uh, uh, today. Because in the, when a uh, survey was made, in 2019 by the buffer they reported that 99 percent of the respondent they report they they said that okay we want to do work uh, from home that means they like to do from do work from home that time in 2019 and then the covid 19 started and then in the covid 19 when the 
same uh, you know the same survey was made by the another um, uh, paper on another newspaper and then they report that 52.9 percent of respondents across the organizations such as google facebook and amazon and apple and linkedin and walmart they were facing loneliness now they don't want to work from home because they are very much fatigued to do work from home because why it is in india this is the situation of india and you know that india in the india the 90 percent of the total population are now working from home bound to work from home and may i quote the what is said by the microsoft ceo Shotto nadala that uh, recently he said that the, that this culture that is a work from home culture which is uh, we, uh, that because there is no option we have to work from home may have adverse effect on people's mental well-being this is a very important part you know very important thing that will affect the mental well-being because in indian culture we because there is no infrastructure for doing this type of work from home type of thing because in india we are very much happy to do we like we love to talk with everybody because we are very much social you know social type of things and we love to talk we love to uh, you know contact everybody to come in contact with everybody and that's the thing and according to nadala it is, uh, he also said that uh, you know the video calls are fine for the interim period for a short period but this cannot be considered a replacement for in person meeting and now the COVID-19 posters to do to not to do any in-person meeting. That is the social distancing has created a severe problem. But uh, you know that uh, in um, India.com, uh, India.com also given a, a report in uh, July 22, 2020, that 74% of people in India say they will continue to work this type of thing. That is the work from home they will continue after the COVID-19. And 91% of respondents in India agree that they have increased their use of laptops. And now we have to work sitting you know, in front of the laptop. And now we have to work because uh, it is behind that thing. The productivity of the organization is very much related. They will not, you know, give you any space. You have to increase your productivity. You have to increase your productivity. You have to show your productivity, you know, when you, are, when you have to work from home. And now the very interesting thing, the Times of India report, June 8, 2020, that majority of the companies have reported that increased productivity during this lockdown. And this thing, that is the, we have increased our productivity. So it is a, you know, the working from home, or this is the boon, this is like a boon. But I should quote the second line of this report, that also the anxiety, the stress, the fatigue also increased. And you know, this anxiety, this stress, not only the mental stress only, but the physical stress, they have to work more than 12 hours sitting behind the, you know, before, in front of the laptop. And then they develop some back pain, severe back pain. And we have to think these are the all the side effects like insomnia, back aches, restlessness, stress and anxiety. Because we have to fulfill the, you know, the, uh, what to say, that we have to fulfill our target because behind behind us there the management is there and now it is very difficult situations we are facing and i think that in future also we will face these things because we don't have any infrastructure because i want to uh, quote another the last one that is the from the print that what is reported in thursday 22nd august 2020 that india is not ready for a work from home model but now we have to work from home. And then Indian companies are not built to adapt work from home policy. And the most important thing the report, the, in the report, the most important thing is a large number of employees don't have proper workstations at their homes. So in which way we can combat this loneliness, in which way we can combat 
these mental disorders, the physical disorders, and that is the focal point. That should be the focal point, and I, I, I am sure that that is the focal point of this webinar. So from this webinar, we'll get so many solutions, so many things from the from our esteemed you know speaker that in which way we'll combat these things and which way we can you know you can uh, you can uh, of course you can you have to increase your productivity but at the same time you can give comfort to your body to your mind thank you thank you for your patience hearing and this is the end of my talk thank you thank you professor somnath gangopadha for your wonderful speech and uh, now we move to the uh, next session uh, i think uh, professor gl khanna has not reported uh, see, he called that uh, called me and said that he has some meeting so i request professor kushal k das professor Depart uh, in the department of bld university and he was a visiting professor in the school of medicine university of leeds a visiting professor tulne university the school of medicine usa he has started his career as a physiologist in the i think that uh, you, 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 can, you can reduce it no problem they know me <laughs> yeah okay. yeah still still uh, okay uh, professor das has a uh, research interest in the deep, uh, area of toxicology uh, environmental physiology and uh, vascular physiology he has published uh, so many research papers and at present he is a, uh, a member of the international program management under unesco chair and uh, for the uh, biophysics and biotechnology so with this brief introduction we know uh, him uh, very well he is a uh, eminent professor in the uh, field of physiology so with this brief introduction i invite professor kushal k das and uh, ask him to say something uh, about this uh, webinar over to you sir thank you very much dr indoni uh, first of all i like to send my gratitude to principal professor bera i also like to send my convey my gratitude to all the organizing committee first who are doing such a great job especially to you who have invited me personally my great regards to my president of the physiological society of india i am very fortunate that in this platform i am getting my teacher also and i am getting my friend and i am also getting my seniors and my juniors all together that's very interesting in this part professor amar chandra the president of the physiological society of india he was the research scholar when i joined in presidency college for undergraduate in 1979 so he almost like my teacher and he was there when i was just an 18 years old boy joined in a presidency college as an undergraduate student so i convey my best regards and i wish him a great success further he has almost done a wonderful job for the society he changed the physiological society a dynamic society he made the subject and research to a very high esteem so my great regards to professor chandra my great regards to all the senior my elder professor like professor prakash dhara was almost uh, worked with me for many of my one of my students phd students so my convey my regards to him my great friend my great friend professor chomnath gangopadhyay who was my classmate in post graduation in university of calcutta a renowned ergonomist and a physiologist and a very dynamic person and a unique in his own way and he made one of the i can consider him as one of the illustrious physiologists which university of calcutta has produced in recent years and i really inspired by his work and motivations and all my great regards and my best thanks to my almost my doctor my my senior professor g l khanna who is honorable professor g l khanna who is now vice chancellor in gurgaon so uh, professor khanna is a very renowned sports physiologist and former he was a senior scientific officer of the sports authority of india was the dean of manavrachana university i know him since long period of time and his association with physiological society of india in a very esteemed way and his contribution is a remarkable for our country 
He is the mentors of many of the Olympians of our country. I my regards to Professor T L Khanna, my junior colleagues and all, Professor Prashun, who is now the uh, Ames Jodhpur Associate Professor, and many others, and all the participants, delegates, and all. The theme of this seminar was very unique and very important at the moment. I feel that the physical and mental health is both are essential not only for the normal human being but for the almost those who are working from home as well as working on station like me because we are working because our system medical university and our most important faculty is the faculty of medicine in this perspective we have a hospital teaching hospital with 1250 bed capacity of which 250 bed super specialty is now completely dedicated to covid patients and in which we every day we get around 80 60 to 80 patients per day we also discharge the same number 60 to 80 per day are being discharged from the hospital so the situation in the hours is quite different we are working since we have no lockdown except one first one month but that too also we doctors we are all doctors in our institution they work our laboratories are all open research is going on in the full swing all our people are asked to write the project send the grant and getting the grant also simultaneously we have recently got the lakhs of rupees grants from the different peoples and different these things to carry out the research and this is one of the phenomena while we are having the two different identity one are the researcher basic scientists in the medical school others are the front line covid warrior who are directly working in which the nursing pharmacy other supporting staffs are also involved and this has made we observe a tremendous psychological pressures so it is not only the work from home make the psychological depression and one aspect my in our universities our psychiatry department of psychiatry is working on this along with the other a collaborative research work including the western uh, american university that is the um, university of north carolina on psychological impact of the healthcare workers in this medical schools of our states so these five medical colleges chosen of which our medical college is one among them so it is a really phenomena how to motivate the doctor initially when the covid has entered into our institutions first in the medical school the first two reports it has been not done exactly though we are prepared we have a trial mock deal but still we unable to understand that how to do it and in that returns two of our post graduate students who are doing the md medicine are affected first and they were hospitalized so this has make an alert so how to make the environment actually to adapting this pathway but what exactly the psychological problem occurs this has made our doctors and the healthcare of people are in the two way they divided one way they took it as a challenge as the professionals and to work like it professionals and they are the most important frontline doctors in our covid covid hospitals simultaneously we got another group of doctors and healthcare professionals including nurses who are scared to do this job many of them actually has start resigned and some of them applied for the leave then government and other institute organization has to come up with the cancellation of the leave no leave will be given to any healthcare professionals this issue has been given again it has gone under the labor law so many of the issues have come across which has made the turbulence of the administrator psychology also the perception of a institution where healthcare directly deal and their administration pathway including the government sector regularly we have a meeting with the deputy district commissioner district magistrate divisional manager the commissioners regularly only how to improve this quality and initially when our institution does not have the covid testing lab we are depending on the other institution and other laboratory and it has taken time then our institution got the permission from the icmr to start the covid laboratory and thanks to our young three important uh, faculty member who 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 had deputed from the research laboratory to the covid laboratory for working for the covid testing 
and then now it is almost two and a half months so it has now come back to a little normal because now our people's of our place remote place we are getting the report very early that is one of the reason little stress has been reduced because we are not in agonized and waiting for a long period of time to get a report so this phenomena has come our whole designs of the hospital management has been changed based on the psychology of the people based on the psychology of the patient because we have the faculties we have the postgraduate we have the residents senior residents junior residents interns and also sisters brothers and other paramedical staffs so how they will be cope up so they have we have given many of the mental boosting proposal we have initiated for insurance of given to the all faculty member all the people who are directly working on the covid we have given them incentives we have given them many of the rewards so in this way we have to boost up the psychological perspective of a healthcare professional which is very neglected i am finding in most of the places they do not discuss about the psychology of the warrior who are actually the fact and most disturbing thing is that there are the disturbances occur when the patient died in covid and the family members are actually not willing to take the bodies in the initial stage and even they take they have a different interest because government gives a huge lump sum of money of it persons who died in covid if the report written by the doctors that it said that due to covid that the whole scenario that will be getting lakhs of rupees as a compensation for quoting that sometime what happened the patient with the comorbidity with other reasons they die they ask specialized to doctors to do right on covid so these are the factors which actually the healthcare professional as i represent them because i belong to a faculty of medicine and working in a direct covid hospital for last 6 months here so i know very well the what mental disturbance i think that this issue i do not know whether other speakers will raise this point or not but i feel it's my moral responsibility to raise the issue even this i have issued i have raised and shared with my unesco as now currently i am holding the position of the dean of unesco chair life sciences so in this position i have discussed with the multiple people many faculties and many doctors and many other scientists around the world and we share the understanding and found that it is almost same like others whether it is the us or it is italy or it is the taiwan or it is in india persons mentality to the covid 19 is almost same in all lockdown and what effect of lockdown and the psychological part that i think that many speaker will discuss i discussed with all of you i shared with my personal experience in during this turbulent period and being a professor of physiology and, and currently i am a distinguished chair professor of our university also in this capacity i am giving the perfect information that which is a life information from a covid hospitals and the healthcare system so with this i wish a great success of this conference this meeting of webinar it should be fruitful people should understand all the things and take the disease very seriously and also be productive because one of the reason that dr somnath gongapad has correctly pointed out that the huge profit from the working from the uh, home how uh, in the home work in home but simultaneously i can tell you in my city capi my place in karnataka in bangalore lakhs of people have lost the job in the it sectors and all so profit may be also considered in a proper audit so that is also important part of it because lots of people have lost the job i know many people they have no job at all and also secondarily many private sector they have reduces the salary of the people who are working from the home so many issues are there that is very serious and not only our country this is happening in us also massive scale us it is going on this is one of the disturbances i wish all the best to the seminar and i wish that that be great benefit for the participants and i further thanks to organizer to invite me and my great regards to my professor and my teacher dr amar chandra and my friends and all thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, professor kushal uh, das for your wonderful speech and how you uh, explain your experience in your own institution about how you are uh, you are uh, coping with the situation at the present situation so thank you all of you Uh, for the uh, inaugural session now we will have the uh, resource person they will speak uh, on their topic so first we invite 
Professor Prokash Chandra Dhara. He is the keynote speaker of our today's program. Professor Dhara, Professor Dhara is a professor oh. in the department, former professor in the Department of Physiology, Vidyasagar University. Currently working as uh, a director in the distance education department of distance education with the Sagori University. Professor Dhara also act as the convener IQAC in with the Sagori University. He has a teaching experience of over 33 years and under his guidance, 24 students have received PhD degree. He has completed 10 research projects, including DST, uh, DRDO, IC, uh, IS, CSIR, ICMR, etc. He has uh, published more than 100 research papers and uh, that has been published in different international and national journals. And with this brief introduction, I request Professor uh, Prakash Chandra Dhara to speech on his topic. His to today's topic is importance of physical exercise for the physical wellness during COVID-19 pandemic. I request Professor Dhara to deliver his speech. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Can you listen? Hello, sir. Yes, you are audible, yes. sir. Yes, uh, have, uh, may I give it uh, half an hour? Half an hour time is given. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the many dignitaries present in this national webinar. I Pay my respect to Honorable Principal Dr. Vera and the uh, organizing secretary and other members of the physiology department and the dignitaries present in the uh, in in, uh, in this webinar and the my dear participants. At the outset, I first convey my Sincere thanks to the organizer for inviting me to deliver this uh, key, uh, keynote speech, speech in this national webinar. As uh, mentioned, that uh, uh, I shall speak about the importance of the physical uh, exercise in this COVID-19 pandemic situation. So first of all, I am going to share my slide. Uh, is it seen now? Hello, is it seen? The slide is coming to the display. Hello? No, sir. Still Anyone not. can answer me? Is the slide is uh, displaying? No, no, it's not so visible. Not visible. Okay, okay, okay. So yes. you just go to the share option, then yes. Uh, application so window. Step. Yes, application window. Yes. If it is come, uh, tell me. Yes, sir. No. No, it no, not, no, not, uh, not displayed? No, sir. Still not. Yes, and now it's uh, fine, sir. Uh, slide is showing? Yes, yes, sir. Now? Is it uh, showing it's now? A, it's a yeah. black. Uh, so uh, you just. Uh, you just uh, uh, apart from your PPT. No, sir. Yes. You can see your PPT is there. Now you uh, you have to go to the PPT. 
So you have to operate from there. Uh, uh, can you see it? Can you see it now? No, sir. It's black. Uh, so you just operate uh, the PPT from uh, that portion. Uh, you just leave this house and go to your PPT and you yes. have to operate from there. Somehow it is going to be giving some problem. Uh, it is showing black. Yes. Uh, so what I have to do now? So you just uh, close uh, for once your PPT, then open it again. White is black. Not come yet. Why no, is this black? I, uh, I don't know why it uh, come. Sir, uh, two things you have to follow. Uh, just uh, uh, you just you have to enter this broadcast studio where we are right now. Then you uh, have to share your screen. Then uh, after that, uh, as I said, that the button share button will be green. Then you have to click on that. Then you have to go back to your, your PPT again, leaving this room. Application window. Yes, then click on the application window, uh, PPT, application window PPT. PPT is showing on your screen. PPT in yes. the small box, the small box, and the share button will become green. No, it is not on. When you will select your PPT on application window, then it is the not share showing actually. Will... It is not showing in the application window. So you, your PPT is open in the background? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe we are having the technological glitches, sir. So that's why, uh, maybe. Yes, uh, share the screen. Uh, yes, yes, share screen. OK. Then three, three options you're getting. You enter screen, application window, Chrome tab. So you just click on application window. Then click yes. on your PPT. Then click on your PPT. PPT. And then PPT. then uh, PPT. then share option. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, this so, is I have PPT, but PPT then is showing. Uh, PPT yes, is showing. Uh, then, yes, not showing. Uh, PPT is showing in my window. Then you you just click on that PPT and you just uh, click on the button share when it becomes green. In the box, share your screen. You have to click on the application window, and then you have to click on the PPT. Then you have Where? to. Yes, it, now it has been come. Share become uh, no. green. It is come. And then click on the share button. Yes. Yes. Uh, if it is green, then click on yes. Uh, no, it's still not visible. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. It is visible, but it's black. Now you go back to your PPT. Yes. You now go back to your PPT. You just uh, click on your taskbar. So at the bottom of your laptop or computer, you just click on the PPT. Yes, you I leave. have that. Yes, so, I have done it. So, uh, so you have to operate from there. From your PPT, but it should be come come to the visible come visible to the audience. So you you can see PPT is open. Yes. So you are operating from your PPT. Uh, no, 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 actually, you see uh, application window. It is black. It is showing black. The PPT is open in the background or not? Uh, so yes, you have to make it, it open. open. It is open. It is open. It is open. So you have not minimized, no? Have you yes. minimized? Yes. No, no, no. Sir. Don't minimize. We just let it open the. Open. 
so you are uh, you just uh, leave your ppt open in the background then you come to the studio yes that i come now now it is showing powerpoint is showing no 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 sir. still not yes yes now it's okay yes now visible visible now you open now it's visible now you open from your ppt so don't okay. don't come back to the studio okay 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 fine it's okay so so, so uh, uh, very much sorry uh, no, for sir. for that uh, for some technical problem actually uh, good morning everybody i'm now uh, today i shall talk about the uh, talk about the importance of exercise for the physical wellness during covid 19 pandemic uh, this is my topic and uh, you know that the covid 19 pandemic has a tight grip on this world and people are scared they confined at their homes so under this condition uh, physical and emotional well-being is more important than ever before so physical exercise may be a good means for wellness of the people under this pandemic situation now uh, first of all i shall uh, point out some of the uh, general benefits of the physical exercise so you know that the physical exercise is beneficial of of the uh, health uh, of our body so uh, first of all i point out some of the important points so you know the benefits of the physical exercise are numerous and including better health better strength more fitness flexibility increased energy and improved appearance and a more positive attitude and mood so regular exercise can lead to both immediate and long term benefits so regular physical activity has been shown to reduce the morbidity and mortality from any tonic diseases so this is very important under this situation and it also reduces the risk of uh, many diseases and people who participate in regular exercise have a the decreased risk of developing uh, the diseases like heart disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, colon cancer, lung cancer, and breast cancer. And now the question comes whether it can reduce the risk of the COVID-19 infection or not. And uh, so you see, this is the picture uh, showing the different benefits of the exercise. And actually it uh, provides the uh, better cardiovascular health. Those who perform their physical exercise regularly increase uh, both the size and strength of the heart. And it can pump more blood with the less effort and becomes more difficult, more efficiently, and uh, more efficiently can uh, heart become more efficient. And this will lower the pulse and lower the blood pressure and which can increase the lifespan. The circulatory system is also improved because of the increased blood volume, providing more oxygen to the muscle. And these effects are uh, will translate into a reduced risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. And you know that it is uh, it is well known that the person having the comorbidity like heart disease uh, that enhance the suffering during corona infarct infection. Their life risk is more having the uh, heart disease. So, and it also lower the cholesterol level, you know, the physically fit person uh, have the uh, uh, cholesterol level becomes lower. It also builds the stronger bones, joints and ligaments, which actually makes us more uh, uh, efficient and to perform work in a better way. And you see, and it also it, uh, it, it builds the relaxation and stress. And there are many stress factors in our day to day life. And particularly, you know, uh, during the this pandemic situation, the stress factor uh, has been intensified because the lifestyle has been changed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, people live under the extreme stress in this competitive world. Regular physical activity and fitness workout releases the hormones and feel, uh, feel good factor and this effect the reducing your stress level and gives more strength and fights life's challenges and it also the fight against the depression yeah. uh, because you see 
uh, Professor Das just pointed out that how the people become depressed and depression comes in this pandemic situation and affects the physical activity uh, of, and exercise on mood are immediate and blood flow in the brain in the increased endorphin are released in our uh, uh, are released and it lifts the mood and the endorphins makes you feel better and fight the stress and the depression and uh, the persons who apart from regular exercise the stress during the corona infection may be reduced it causes the delayed aging that means lifespan may be increased it also postponed the fatigue 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 uh, so fatigue time will be delayed those who perform regular exercise now i shall discuss uh, the point the health benefits of exercise in the context of the covid 19 covid 19 what is the health benefits uh, particularly i shall discuss now first of all the exercise boosts the immunity during the infection this is the this is striking point that can be helpful for to fight against the coronavirus. Each bout of exercise, particularly if it is for the whole body exercise and cardiorespiratory exercise, it immediately it mobilizes the billions of immune, immune cells, especially those cell types that are capable of carrying out effectors, functions such as the recognition and killing of virus infected cells. Recognition and killing of the virus infected cells. And the mobilized cell firstly enter into the blood compartment from the marginated vascular pools, the spleen and the bone marrow, before trafficking to the secondary lymphoid organs and tissues, particularly to the lungs and the guts where increased immune defense may be required. And the immune cells that are mobilized with exercise are primed and look for a fight. And their frequent circulation between the blood and tissues fun functions to increase the increase the host immune surveillance and which makes the more resistance to infection and better equipped to deal with the infectious disease, particularly in the old persons. And it boosts the uh, and exercise also uh, releases various proteins that can help to maintain the immunity, particularly muscle derived cytokines such as uh, interleukin 6 il7 and il15 and it has uh, three different functions and uh, for example il6 it has been shown to direct the immune cell trafficking towards the areas of infection and il7 it promotes the production of the new t cells from the thymus and uh, uh, il15 helps into the helps to maintain the peripheral t cells and NK cells compartments, uh, uh, these are the three functions of those three proteins that IL6, IL7, and IL15. To increase our resistance to infections, particularly in this corona uh, pandemic situation. And ex ex uh, exercise is especially beneficial for the older adults who are more susceptible to infection in general and have also been identified as a particularly vulnerable population during this COVID-19 outbreak. Now, how exercise effective to the fight against the COVID-19? Feet individual, the exercise make use of feet. So feet individual have the lower incidence of infection compared to the inactive and sedentary individual. Physical activity helps to Plus, bacteria out of the lungs, and so decreasing the chance of getting cold, flu, and other illness. Exercise also reduces the levels of the body's stress hormone, such as adrenaline and cortisol. Actually, uh, there is adrenaline and cortisol. Uh, they are the barrier between the uh, barrier uh, between the recovery. So actually, the lower level of the stress hormone may protect against the illness and infection. That means under the stress condition, stress condition uh, uh, that is susceptible to get the illness and infection. So exercise reduces the uh, uh, secretion of the stress hormone and thus 
Belfast for getting uh, not getting infection. Exercise also stimulates the production of the endorphins. So this is a, this is a important chemical in the brain that uh, act as the natural painkiller of the body and the uh, mood elevators. And you see, this is this endorphin is very much important uh, because it actually uh, increases the pain threshold level. That's why that um, uh, people can tolerate the pain to a high level, high high level. So that's why the endorphin secretion uh, due to the exercise also relieves from the pain during any kind of infection. I'm, I'm giving you some experimental evidences. A large study showed that the mild to moderate exercise performed about three times a week uh, reduced the risk of, during the uh, during the Hong Kong flu outbreak in 1998. So, uh, so actually, uh, this is an evidence in 1998, and some experiment uh, recently, some animal experimentation has been done. Studies performed on the mice demonstrated that the regular exercise performed two or three months prior to an infection reduced the illness severity and viral load in both obese and non-obese mice. So, this is a very recent recent study uh, in the 2020, and uh, further. Uh, they conducted studies on the some hu human samples that is the both in collegiate football players and cross country runners which showed the decrease in secretory immunoglobulin that is uh, immunoglobulin a and slga when athletes competed competed and uh, trained hard so slga an antibody protein used by the immune system to neutralize the path pathogen including viruses so this is very much important. It may be important during the uh, uh, coronavirus infection. So SLGA also closely associated with the upper respiratory tract infection. This is a common symptom of the COVID-19 infection. So when SLGA levels goes down, this upper respiratory tract infection usually go up. So they so. This relationship in football players, where the players showed the most this uh, URTI symptoms when their SLG levels were the lowest. So SLGA uh, plays an important role uh, in this regard. And people like uh, with the morbidities like high blood pressure, overweight, obesity, heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes and various cancer can increase the susceptibility to the COVID-19. So regular physical activity can reduce these morbidities and thus people may be less susceptible to the coronavirus infection. So here the, uh, I'm showing this uh, scheme, this possible mechanism, uh, how the exercise can uh, help us to fight against the coronavirus. Now, first of all, doing the uh, performing the exercise it's mobilized the immune cells which actually helps the killing of virus of the infect infected cell this is one of the way and uh, the muscle uh, exercise causes the muscle derived cytokines il6 il7 il15 which actually produces resistance to infection and uh, exercise also reduces the level of the stress hormone like adrenaline and cortisol, which also uh, causes the resistance to the infection. And exercise helps to flash bacteria and the microbes and viruses out of the lung. So this is also in one of the way to the resistance to the infection. And as I mentioned, exercise causes the release, increased release of the endorphin from the brain, which act as a natural painkiller and the mood elevator and this is also helpful for the uh, for combating the coronavirus infection it also but as you have mentioned the exercise also uh, uh, causes the relieves the anxiety level also so these are the ways how if, if the person apart from regular exercise he can be uh, he can be able to fight against the coronavirus he is less susceptible to the coronavirus and also if it, if if he or she is infected he can uh, have the less sufferings during the infection. 
So uh, uh, what should be the exercise? Exercise for the different age group for children and adolescents, moderate to uh, vigorous exercise, uh, physical activity and exercise during the day associated with the elevation of the self-esteem and improve concentration and reduce depression syndrome, etc. For older adults among the individual, uh, managing uh, chronic medical condition, regular walks are recommended. Strength training has been uh, uh, shown to reduce the symptoms of anxiety individual with and without anxiety disorder. Now, due, what should be the duration of exam, uh, exercise? Uh, there is a WHO recommendation like this. The infants under the age of one year need to be physically active uh, several times a day. Children under five years age should spend at least 180 minutes a day in physical activities and three to four years old uh, being the moderately or vigorously active for one hour a day. Children and adolescents of uh, age 15 to 17 years, all children and adolescents should do at least 60 minutes a day, uh, moderate to vigorous intensity, physical activity. And for the adults age over 18 years should go it, uh, do a total at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity throughout the week, 20, that means the 20 minutes per day, or at least 50, 75 minutes of vigorous, vigorous intensity physical activity, that means 10 minutes per day, including the muscle strength activities. Other adults do uh, with the poor mobility should do physical activity to enhance the balance and prevent the falls three or more days per week. But one thing is, uh, even along with the regular exercise, the active lifestyle is also helpful. That is one kind of exercise that also help us to uh, uh, fight against the Corona virus. So people advise to stay home as far as possible during COVID pandemic, but the sedentary and non-active people have more chance to be affected. So therefore, people should be active even in the home, at the home, people should maintain an active lifestyle and which will be beneficial for preventing uh, COVID-19. So here are some good recommendations. Uh, this I'm showing some new slide actually. Try to exercise, uh, try to exercise uh, uh, classes online, dance to music, play active video games, try to skipping rope and do some muscle strength and balance training. And uh, do any activity around the home is better than none at all. And uh, uh, who recommends that all healthy adults, the 30 minutes, as you have already mentioned, uh, the, how that sorts of the duration of the exercise, and uh, uh, walk up and down the stairs, some uh, stretching exercise, dance to the music for a few minutes, seek more ideas and resources on online for, uh, for act, to be active, and uh, keeping active every day is good for your body and mind and spirit also and uh, and regularly check your sitting posture and while working from the home people are uh, doing the so work from home under that condition sitting posture is very much important and that is in another aspect uh, this is a, a, a little scope here to discuss and break up sitting and standing while working that means not uh, always maintain the sitting posture sometimes you do the uh, the work on standing condition now, some common physical activities in quarantine period, this is uh, recommended, so walking. Walking is a very good exercise. Walking is a very good exercise over the, over, uh, for the large, as the large muscle uh, over and over and pushes your heart to lungs to work hard. Over the time, it makes your heart stronger and more efficient. Walking also helps you to maintain the weight, to maintain the weight as well as working your muscles and joint into flexibility and uh, so walking may be very good for the particularly for the older adults for the older adults cycling may be a very good exercise the benefits of cycling is endless and regular cycling uh, may, may become very active and this is a very good of good exercise and it burns uh, about 400 calories an hour and the running is a good exercise also running can perform uh, during this period it is a very good cardio, cardiac exercise uh, and uh, running once more uh, straightforward ways to get the important benefits of the exercise. And actually, you see, those uh, uh, those have no uh, place for uh, running 
uh, during this uh, lockdown period or in quarantine period, they can go for the sport jogging. They are no need to go the outdoor. Uh, they can go for the sport jogging and sport jogging may be an alternative to the running, and people may uh, maybe remain very much active and get, get the benefit of the physical exercise. And also they're doing some house chores, household activities like scrubbing, sweeping, the dusting, and vacuum using vacuum clear. This uh, uh, this is also helpful for the uh, people to remain active even within the home, even remaining during the in the home. So uh, uh, other than doing the work, people go for the exercise. As we have mentioned, the key kind of exercise: the aerobic muscle strength and the stretching aerobics can be done the brisk walking or up and down in the stairs and jump in the rope or dance. These are the aerobics, that is the cardiorespiratory uh, uh, cardio exercise. And uh, muscle strength training, they can take the push up, squat, and various simple uh, movements of the body. This is a muscle strength training. Or some stretching exercise can be performed like this. this is some stretching experiment because as the people are compelled to uh, remain in the home, so this kind of uh, exercise, including stretching exercise, will be very beneficial to keep in the fit. And yoga is also very appropriate during the night. But I shall uh, not uh, take time with the yoga because uh, one of the speaker today's webinar, uh, Dr. Saha, will uh, uh, speak about this yoga in detail. So I'm skipping this one. But uh, another thing I shall mention here, that is the breathing exercise. So you know, as we have mentioned, the coronavirus thus causes the disorder of the respiratory tract infection, especially, especially the upper respiratory tract. So some breathing exercise may help to improve the respiratory efficiency. Thus, one can fight against the coronavirus. And uh, one uh, case study I have seen that where uh, a, a corona patient, he said that uh, he was suffered very less even he, he was affected with the COVID-19 because he was used to do the uh, breathing exercise regularly. His suffering was very less. So uh, one or two, three breathing exercise can help for, for you for, uh, for uh, pre preventing these disease and or sufferings from this disease. So I shall uh, briefly show you the, the types of the breathing exercise which can you perform uh, during this time. This will be help you. The first one is the first sleep breathing. Power sleep breathing, this is a very, very easy exercise. And uh, this uh, the power sleep breathing technique is the inhale slowly through your nostril and parse your lip as if, uh, as if pouting and about the blow something and breathe out slowly as possible, as slowly as possible through the power sleep. And this process should be repeated like this. So this is the power sleep breathing, very, very, very simple and easy exercise. And this is uh, impedes your uh, respiratory patients. So belly breathing is a very good one. Very good one. It really uh, increases your respiratory efficiency and, and the performance of, of the lungs. And uh, so what you do, place your one hand on the belly and on the chest and inhale through your nose for two seconds. And breathe out uh, two seconds through the parts leaf and while pressing your abdomen. So that the abdomen should be pressed. That that help you, uh, that, that is the abdominal, uh, so that is the belly breathing, the abdominal muscles should work and this will help you for the forced breathing and uh, this will uh, increase your respiratory efficiency. And deep breathing, this is, this is a very simple exercise and uh, uh, inhale deeply through your nose and hold your breath as you count to five, that is five seconds and release your ear slow, deep exhale and through your nose until you feel inhaled air uh, has to be released. So this is the deep breathing. And there is another thing that is the half cup breathing. So half cup breathing. Is, so this is uh, very good also that inhale through your mouth and slightly deeper and activate your stomach muscle to to blow the air out of the uh, even three breaths. Actually, it is like the abdominal breathing. And while making this sound, ha, 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 that means uh, this will uh, create some force to this abdomen and uh, the air will be exhaled out. So this will increase your uh, breathing efficiency. Particularly those who have, uh, have some uh, powerful mucus, they, uh, they have uh, will be benefited with this 
half cup exercise. So alternate list, uh, uh, nostril breathing. This is very easily usually done in the uh, yoga also. And uh, this is uh, alternately, it is very easy. It is, uh, that is the one nose is closed and uh, uh, breathe, is, uh, breathe is taken in one uh, with the nostril, one nostril. And then another nostril is closed. Then uh, the same in, inhale through it and exhale, exhale to the other nose, other nostril. And thus it should be continuous for five minutes. And this is a very good uh, exercise. It is uh, also found in that joke. So this is about the breathing exercise. So actually, you see, I have taken uh, some time. Actually, I have come, I think I have uh, five minutes more. So actually, I now by the topic is exercise a sports person in the Corona pandemic. So I'm not uh, much detail. I'm uh, briefly this part. I think actually, you see, now the, the COVID-19 pandemic situation, competition of sports event become uh, stand still in the in our country and throughout the world. So uh, now the uh, sports person are cannot participating in any sports event, and their practice and training is also uh, is uh, they are not in proper way. So they are, uh, so this should go for the uh, proper, proper practice and training in this period to maintain their fitness level. But uh, each uh, safe under this pandemic condition. If any person is affected, this should be very much cautious about this training because the sportsmen they have to go for the hard training. They have some uh, some uh, risk also for uh, players and athletes uh, because you see, according to the American College of Cardiology, regular moderate exercise and an abundant beneficial effects around the cardiovascular system, including the mental health, but. Uh, there, there remains some controversy as they were more exhaustive and prolonged exercise, negatively affects the immune system and increase the susceptibility to infection. And given that the COVID-19 has a numerous direct and indirect effects on the heart and question remains regarding the safety of exercise. So in these exposed COVID-19 and who are uh, uh, recovering also. So you see this, the, the players and athletes must be Causes while they go for the practice uh, because they have to very hard training. So this may be detrimental to their health also. Then also I am so uh, I am not going to the detail about it. And today's newspaper we have read that some of the player uh, cricket teams in the Dubai uh, that is the IPL they have got uh, some COVID infection. So. Uh, uh, so in this situation, the players, all the players should be very much cautious uh, about, to, uh, about the exercise during this COVID infection, particularly generally recommended to avoid exercise and training during active infections. And there is also return to the exercise is most, uh, the post myocarditis has to be approached for the person. Because uh, you see some, some type, some, some, sometimes some players or some of the active uh, sportsmen, the high level, high uh, ranking players may have some uh, myocarditis due to the high degree of the uh, practice. So some recommendation to the recommend exercise. So mild to moderate symptoms, those who have the mild to moderate system uh, who are not uh, hospitalized, they can resume the recreational exercise at moderate intensity once completely recovered, completely recovered. And returning uh, and the asymptotic individual without COVID symptom, continued regular exercise is appropriate and beneficial. And it is important to respect the current social distancing guidelines and including exercise in groups. A non peer reviewed research from Belgium has highlighted that uh, some situation in the current recommendations in maintaining two meters distance may not be enough for the uh, going exercise. You see, Two meters is, uh, is, is recommended for the common sedentary activities, but in exercise, two meters is not enough because they are in the motion during the training and uh, or running like that. So they may be affected uh, so by stimulating the release of cerebral body. Researcher found that even if individuals were sneeze or cough while exercising, following behind them in the same direction uh, would be at the risk of ex exercise. So they recommend it to maintain the four to five meters if walking, 10 meters if running, and 20 meters if cycling. 
so this uh, should be keep in mind uh, while the sports person uh, doing the exercise under this covid 19 pandemic situation uh, so this is the protocol of exercise actually this is the common protocol however uh, some guidelines i have just um, I, i shall finish with this some guidelines for the sports person so do part from the mild to moderate exercise for 2 to 5 minutes up to 3 times a week and strive to maintain the strength of fitness during the quarantine period and do you avoid physical contact during exercise such as playing team sports and that is likely to expose you to the mucosal fluids and hand to hand hand to face contact was and disinfect equipment after you, you you know that the sports person use different uh, sports equipment and that should be infected disinfected and if you are in a gym find one that that adequately ventilated and exercise away from others to avoid droplets and remain engaged with the uh, teammates through uh, social media and rather that social gatherings and contact eat sleep well and boost your immune system and remain optimistic to uh, to be uh, to be healthy to remain healthy and fit so it, uh, this is about the some, uh, some uh, thing about the uh, suggestion for the sportsman during this covid 19 situation now it can be concluded that exercise is the best medicine aside from the social isolation and must it is also possible that uh, it is the best strategy to maintain uh, the risk of having uh, severe issues of covid 19 group exercise should be avoided regularity exercise should be maintained and along with exercise nutritious food should be taken to keep the healthy and the fit so that we can avoid the this corona infection so thank you very much for patient yeah thank you so much sir uh, your nice presentation and informative session now the session is open for the discussion and uh, in chat box there are two uh, questions here sir we will show the question in the screen first from the shubhabrata bag is there any relationship with cellular immunity yes actually i have already mentioned the, uh, the mechanism also how the exercise is related to the immune process it actually increases the uh, cellular production immune cell production and not only that the some proteins il6 il7 and i think the product protein synthesis uh, synthesis this protein is has been increased which is directly related to the cellular immunity any other question okay sir next question what is cytokine cytokine storm is related to covid 19 how the exercise can affect it oh uh, yes uh, i have also also uh, uh, been said in during my lecture uh, that uh, exercise actually increases the cytokine production cytokine production the cytokine production is increased and you know these cytokines that uh, helps to fight against uh, any kind of uh, microbe that is particularly virus so it it is it is hopefully that although the the much research is also required for this it is hopefully that it also fight against the, against the uh, corona virus that is covid 19 that is that is a uh, increase search in the uh, immune activity okay sir 
ओके सर नो मोर क्वेश्चन इन चैट बॉक्स थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी फॉर दिस इंटीरियर now i would request to invite our next speaker professor dr bojanti baur it's my privilege to introduce professor baur madam is serving as a professor and hod department of community medicine midnapur medical college and hospital she acted as a hod for more than 7 years she received mbbs degree dph md and diploma in community psychiatry from the national institute of mental health and neurosciences she has teaching experience of 39 years and also experience in rural urban slum and health administration the area of her teaching and also research interest in community medicine epidemiology maternal and child health mental health and community psychiatry she guided her phd student in wbsigu his she published more than 60 research papers in different national and international journals she participated more than 100 national and international conferences she is acting as a president of indian association of preventive and social medicine with this introduction i request to professor bojanti baur ma'am to take over the session welcome you ma'am and also i Say your Welcome. slide. Welcome, everybody. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. I am thankful to the organizer for inviting me to take in front of the August gathering through this webinar. My topic is simple ways to become mentally strong and fearless. next slide next slide every day just just a minute just just a slide to big so uh, whole screen whole screen can you take it whole screen every day begin with an act of courage and hope getting out of bed mashan koli said it all we know that knowledge is power it is quoted by francis bacon next slide before going to the topics some important baseline scientific information we needed to discuss on mental health we know that the brain is our supremo of the human body this is the picture of different parts of brain that is the frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe temporal lobe cerebellum and brain stem now just to recapitulate the function of this parts of the brain next slide it is a frontal lobe frontal lobe relates to problem solving exercises judgment planning personality emotion organization attention and concentration and speech so this these are the functions of the frontal lobe when we come over the come to the temporal lobe it is relates to memory hearing understanding and the language that is the receptive language that is organization and sequencing of the language then the parietal lobe parietal lobe it is a sense of touch that is a differentiation between the sight shape color these are the function of the parietal lobe next slide occipital lobe it all we know that occipital lobe is relates to the vision a function of vision and cerebellum cerebellum that is the balance 
coordination, skilled motor activity. These are the cerebellum function. And brain stem, that is the brain stem is very important. It is a vital function. That is the breathing, control of the heart rate, and arousal and consciousness. Sleep and wake function. Also the attention and concentration. So these are the functions of human brain, which job is related related to which activities. Now next slide. Now uh, that is a neurotransmitter. What is the neurotransmitter? A neurotransmitter is defined as a chemical messenger that carries, boosts, and balances. the signal between the neurons nerve cell and other cells in the body so neurotransmitter is very important these neurotransmitters are chemical messengers they are the why they are the wide variety which will which relates the physical and psychological function including the heart rate deep sleep appetite mood and fear the important neurotransmitter in the brain is glutamate and gaba and there is some neuromodulator these are the dopamine serotonin norepinephrine acetylcholine next slide there is that a these these neurotransmitter may be excited in nature may be inhibited in neurotransmitter excited in neurotransmitter at the glutamate acetylcholine do histamine dopamine norepinephrine we call it is as adrenaline and uh, noradrenaline and the uh, epinephrine known as the adrenaline and inhibitory neurotransmitter is gaba and serotonin and dopamine with next now we somehow some discussion about the communication why we need communication if we understand the mental health that is the mental being that is the client that is the any person so any person when we we first communicate with that person in our family or in a community setting in a school in a college so communication is very important skill of a person who deal with the mental health we are we are the human being we every individual can deal with communication and it is a skill you can develop the communication skill so ensure the communication should be clear empathic Emp empathic not sympathy empathic means that person go to the that person level empathic and sensitive to his or her point of importance is gen according to gender culture and language differences if if we talk in hindi uh, to a english speaking person it is not okay so language is very important in our country in our setting we must know bengali is bengali is important as the uh, mixture is there that is that is uh, it is in hospital setting my as i am a doctor in hospital setting may many person came to from um, uh, distance places for reading the courses and that they are hindi speaking but if they talk to the person in outdoor or any any in the world um, in hindi speaking not not being they are not realize the bengali it is the difference regarding regarding the counseling be friendly res, uh, respectful and non judgmental first of you no, don't be judgmental when the person came uh, you must be non judgmental and and use simple and clear language respond to the disclosure or of the person on private or distressing information 
with sensitivity anywhere if if you are dealing with a friend you must be one to one you don't say that that distressing news to another friend in a in a college situation one friend can tell to one but he cannot tell to other so be during the communication you must remember that the private and distressing information you cannot share she or he can not share with any other she can share to one how it it may be a health personnel maybe maybe his mother maybe or father but not 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 other another one so be careful provide information of health in understandable terms ask the person with the with his or her own understanding it is very important some sometime we um, tell something to a person whether it is understandable or not to that person at the after the session and up to 5 to 10 minutes to you you must keep the understanding in any any type of act in college or school in a, any teacher or any setting any setting you first check do the job and check the understanding of that person next slide rapport rapport building that is the information taking it is general information that is a present problem any any person came to any anyone we with the people we hand over the situation to every person every person that is the mental health is related to everywhere everyone there is a duty in the community so general information that is a present problem family family history personal problem past psychiatric and medical history appearance and behavior that is the mood mood that is a speech maybe um, a speech quantity quantity is maybe decreased or increased that is the thought in case of thought that is the delusion obsession phobia suicidal ideation it is very important in the community setting you must inquire if it, if there is any mental worry or anxiety in a person you come over this covid pandemic situation or any time he is he, he discloses something that i am not okay you must ask as a friend or as a health worker or mother or father or friend that that person having any idea about suicide it is very important ideation if present you can take seriously go to specialist specialist cover don't don't delay any ideation is important to control the situation of that depressive player pers regarding perception hallucination illusion serotonin uh, that is the sensory and cognition that is the consciousness patient patient is uh, or client is conscious or not and there is orientation about time place person and whether memory persisting past memory present memory and knowledge and intelligence it is should be judged on the educational background at the that the background whether uh, how how much he is educated maybe maybe in community setting maybe there is education is less but due to tv media some information she or he gather already next slide now now coming to that main topics mentally strong this this is the session to what are the ways to become mentally strong and fearless we previous background now we judge the mental strongness 
the pre the person can able to unlock the door of courage to bounce back when life storm hit to avoid depression and anxiety so who is mentally strong is there any problem and she can face the problem and outweigh the problem come going through the problem then then she is overcome the problem she she is in tune with her own body and emotional thoughts and able to have a positive outlook on most things of life it is the main key that is positive outlook no negativity a mentally strong person must have in all situation positive outlook now what is fear what is fear fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger pain or harm i repeat fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger pain or harm next so to be mentally strong first manage your emotion our emotion play a big role how we act or react to a negative situation so the um, important it is important is internally to understand and acknowledge your feelings and how they affect our decision it is a practice it is a practice from negative to positive the power of positive thinking you must acquire if you have not you must acquire it is the positive thinking is the best chance to succeed in your life don't worry reframing your mind with the technique that it takes time but you you can it is possible through repetition you will change your outlook from negative to positive this emotional awareness help you to avoid the making irrational choices driven by emotion if we emotional em emotion is too much we can do wrong so control your emotion and act positively these are the picture that is the happiest picture and with and different pictures different emotional faces next it is also picture you you just see the happiness and the, the anxiety oriness in mind next be happy the best i told happiness is the key happiness comes from within it is not dependent on external things or on other people there is a quote that is a uh, brian ois you become vulnerable and can be easily hurt when your feelings of security and happiness depends on behavior and action of other people never give your power to someone else so your happiness is depend not on other people you realize it your happiness comes from within so become that person to become happy it is come from yourself there is some food sugar beans eggs meat with low fat content almonds which are just few foods li linked with dopamine release dopamine is feel good hormone neuro a uh, neuromodulator they this food are release the dopamine and foods high in tryptophan and which have been linked to increase serotonin level it is also help 
could contain probiotics that is zugart kimchi sakarkrat a this these are also these also influence to release the hormones dopamine is a feel good hormone dopamine release depends upon uh, some activities if you exercise it uh, release dopamine if you take uh, this is the feline adrenaline and tyrosine that the precursor of uh, dopamine in uh, the, the uh, protein protein uh, protein containing foods would uh, give that feline feline adrenaline and tyrosine and if you exercise good sleep and get enough sunlight it helps in dopamine release next now setting your goals to be mentally strong you must set your goal you are in a negative situation diverting your mind from that issue you are think thought thinking so much negative negative that is covid pandemic games or a, or a exam games and then any situation a profound thinking it is, it is not good so out of that situation set your goal what is the goal that start some amount of physical activity some amount of physical movement including exercise maybe dancing maybe walking nature walk any drawing or any other interesting activity may work best any activity that help you in case of setting goal you first realize that there is some management skill that is the short analysis just this is not in the slide short is one that is the strength weakness opportunity and threat if any work to be to be done in your in your background mind background if you analyze what is the strength of this work what is the weakness of to do this work and what is the opportunity what is the threat in case of our, any organizational level that is the strength and weakness come from the within the organization and from outside the organization it is the opportunity and threat there is there is uh, no further scope of discussion here uh, but one person if is always practicing the sort analysis in her his or her life he must be happier happiest person or successful person both, both go side by side any work suppose you make a bread what is the strength you make to bread making that is water is available and wheat wheat flour is available and your hand is good to to make the make it and you can you can uh, first, first first day you may not may not it comes from making a making a round but weakness is not making it out but strength is your hand and who, who anyone can help that is the opportunity anyone can help that is how how to make round this is that maybe your maybe your mother or mother in law or sister and what is that uh, if you know the oppor opportunity and threat that is uh, 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 anyone came and put water in that that is a threat so any work you if you go in sort analysis you can do next power of exercise that is already there is a session of exercise detailed exercise session you know all this that exercise can reduce stress boost your self esteem improve sleep sleep pattern ward of anxiety and feelings of depression weekly exercise produces endorphin and it interact with the receptors of in the brain to reduce the perception and feeling of pain 
in short the neurotransmitter dopamine and serotonin trigger the positive feeling and reaction of the reaction in the body and create a powerful change in our mindset train yourself moderately for a month and do and we'll, you will see how the effect at the end so you must move from a sitting position deep thinking position that is a negative outlook you become you may be you may become positive now next making and reviewing a list means accountability you you jot down you jot down that work in the morning or in the previous evening next day next day job jot down making and reviewing means the accountability next accountable yourself a good starting point become mentally stronger to write down your short term goal why that it makes real and you must be accountable accountable no longer a false promise yourself sometimes we think we do do it we do it but do don't come then we we goes days goes we goes month goes but not it but it should not be so small target you must do. you must be accountable make new relationship drop old old habit and do thing better now it is the feel feeling internally to do better now next making yourself happy first always i tell that be happy have to yourself happy first you feel mentally stronger if you are happy it is the time to take back the power of your happiness by making compromise to please other at the expense following expense of following your dream don't do you do yourself you make yourself happy it is the it is the way to become mentally stronger don't think about others the fear of disappointing others may hold you back so need to focus on your own personal goal and develop the courage to make decisions that work for you without fearing upsetting some people you realize it that don't please other first please yourself next no risk no gain that is no risk equals no reward you can only develop yourself if you have courage to take risk it may be a challenge taking it may be a job changing business changing or breaking unhealthy relationship so taking risk to move to the next level of life and take the opportunity risk means the next opportunity breaking new ground and achieving new goals means taking risk you once thought was impossible the word itself give you the clue that is i am possible some risks you must take next we all mistake we all make mistakes making a mistake is not failure but failing to learn from that mistake is failure understand it making a mistake is not failure failure from realize the 
realize from that mistake is a failure. Any of us grow without failure? No. Failing and succeeding is the part of life. It is possible to shy away from trying something because of your past mistake, but trying and failing is healthy for your growth. Just your childhood. When, when we are uh, trying to write the alphabets, there is failure. That is A, B, first, no, no first chance. There is failure, then you succeed. Sure, it is the mind, it is the mindset. Mistake is not failure. Mistake is a part of life. Don't fear making a mistake. Instead, learn something new from that and your experiences and use the knowledge to make better decision in the current situation. Next. Small win makes for big gains. Simple win in life makes us feel good. Through feeling better, we become mentally stronger. Set yourself small target. Goal is to set yourself up for success, not failure. Suppose working for 10 minutes daily instead of doing nothing. There is no chance of failure. You must work 10 minutes. It is the, it is the gain. It is the win. You are, uh, you are in, in, uh, in home. At least you go to go upstairs or in, in room. You work. Just sim simple tasks, you get, get positive feelings that I, I can. Simple win make us feel good through feeling better. That feeling better is mentally strong. Next. Forget about your past. You realize that energy is powerful, so focus your outlook on what you, what make you productive. Dwelling or thinking on your past failure or success for much time, it discourages your achieving your goal. Don't waste time. Don't waste time thinking about the past. Whether you have had a good or bad past, you need to put it behind and focus your time and energy on your new target. Next. Celebrate or contemplate. What is complement? This is a profound thinking. Next. Here, balance is the key. Perhaps the people change for contemplating defeat to celebrating their wins, if you fearless. Those people are fear, those people who are fearless, they can celebrate their win, not contemplating their, their his or her defeat. Why celebration is important? Too much negative thinking can sap our energy and weaken our state of mind. So reminding ourselves for the great work we have done in the past, you allow to celebrate ourselves for forward going with confidence. So small amount of celebration is needed in our life. You can celebrate by taking a good food. You for, for your um, um, child, he done a good handwriting, good math, or good uh, good um, recitation. Any, any, any. So give a give a reward. What is reward? Maybe maybe a special box or any anything 
and maybe good food. So celebrate the small win. Next. Now, now before anything about COVID nineteen, we must see that to be mentally strong, it is is easier. Uh, to um, think you better. If you positive thinking, you you should be mentally strong. Be happy, you will be mentally strong. First, happiness of yourself and forget your past. Do better in the future and present. Don't waste your time. These are the key. Simple methods. It is a habit. It is a habit for me. A, a negative. There are there are so many negative people in the uh, community. You you should set an example. Be positive. If there is so many positive people, the negative people think things twice to see you that you a positive people can motivate or give the positivity to other. Now the uh, COVID pandemic and mental health. The next slide. This is the COVID pandemic. It is a stressful situation, uh, and it is the difficult and stressful situation. The stressful that is the it, it is depends on different background. On um, as we are um, uh, staying or our uh, family and friends and um, long time, it is also stressful. On, on uh, there is no outing, and there is maybe there is financial strain, uh, situation different, emotion, health and emotional situation background is different, community may be different, and and um, we can uh, our our uh, aim is to avoid the spread of infection. Next slide. And the, the risks and regarding the vulnerability, who are who are vulnerable? That is the older older uh, older person with comorbid condition. That is hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, and children and te teens. People now who who are with family members and loved one caring. That is a caregiver. Our uh, frontline worker in health and food sector. Our uh, also police, fire brigade. All all are there. Are essential. Um, uh, it is the essential worker who done so much things. Um, people who have uh, existing mental health condition, who uh, who sub, um, where the substances uh, user uh, user uh, there. Next. This this is the. Uh, um, so, so who are in isolation, homeless? Next. And there is some stigma. Why stigma? The, the disease is unknown. And then uh, there is no way to become a definite treatment. So there is a there is always a fear, the fear give the stigma. It is a disease new and it easily associated with others. One fear, one body fear, next, next propagate, that is a fear is propagating. The stigma is propagating. And uh, effect of st stigma uh, drive the people to hide the illness, uh, to avoid discrimination and prevent the people for seeking the healthcare immediately and discourage from adopting healthy behavior. Next. Fear and worry about your own health and health of your family members, uh, your financial situation, job, loss of support, or um, and changes, and this stress can change in uh, sleep and eating pattern, and uh, different in, in concentrating, difference in concentrating, and worsening the health problems from already disease, more uh, more worsening due to avoid um, due to avoidance of um, services also health health services. 
uh, worsening the mental health condition and increased use of tobacco alcohol etc next um you you must take care yourself and for the community care of your friends and your family uh, to uh, as stress reliever balance to uh, balance with care of for yourself also helping other to cope their problems and providing um, social support uh, make the community stronger and by physical distancing mask using and by the hand washing and and phone phone call and video chat can help you uh, if physical as physical contact is not uh, possible so you maintain the social contact through our phones and video chat next next there are healthy healthy ways to cope the stress take care of your body acha uh, okay they, they know the uh, first of all know the prevention i know it is a prevention that is the safe distance six feet distance maintaining social um, that is a physical distance mask use and have frequent hand washing with uh, with the soap sanitizer with at least 70% alcohol and uh, and you know the know the signs symptoms of covid 19 and then uh, this this knowledge can help you to report early uh, to the health health care worker and know where to go and where you get help and uh, so the helpline num there is helpline number uh, and and you uh, should uh, uh, keep touch with the social worker also next um very important is take break from watching reading listening to new stories including those on social media hearing about pandemic repeatedly can get upset can get you upset repeated searching the pandemic news that is a number increasing 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 don't don't worry 100 years ago pandemic is there there is so loss mor morbid morbidity mortality so much but it comes down within a two the two years we expect about vaccine it may to innovate something for us should so uh, too much too much pandemic news is bad for you take care of your body take deep breath already said uh, told stretch uh, and meditation try um, to eat healthy well balanced meal and exercise regularly next plenty of sleep is necessary avoid excessive alcohol and drug use make time to uh, unwind try to do something some activities that you will enjoy connect with other talk with people and you trust about your concern and have your uh, how your you are feeling connect with community and social organization while physical distressing major such place consider connecting online through social media phone or text show mentally strong and fearless act judiciously we have still to still no vaccine definite treatment to come be happy from inner state of mind we still see the sun moon cloud rain trees that means the hope is there help the people around you according to your ability must remember according to your ability so i expect you all to be mental to be mentally strong fearless at least try we must try to be positive thank you all
Pandu. Any questions in the chat box? Please read out to the madam. Some people engage in activities to divert themselves from sorrow. Should we face or face it or divert? It is uh, after all any engagement, any physical engagement. You must realize when sorrow comes, you you do something, something creative which which can become positive. Sorrow, sadness, sorrow, it is all, all are persisting from lifelong. If, if there is loss of father, any, anything loss, we sorrow, feeling sorrow, sad for 24 hours, 48 hours, we, month, not more than six months. If one month, it is too much. You must engage yourself. Sudden, sudden sadness. Sudden, if there is there is some people, there is some sudden sadness came. So then you look, look at the nature. That bird is moving. There is butterfly. That is leaf is coming. Nature is nature is the beauty. You feel the nature. At least you look. You look, look over the uh, over the cloud. Every every moment change. So just your sad thinking is going away. Thank you, Madam. Next question from Shanjay Beda. What types of foods can reduce mental stress? What type of food? <laughs> Food is balanced diet. Always you go for balanced diet. No special food. Balanced diet, it contains your all vitamins, nutri nutrients, that is the minerals through balanced diet. You know that the age-wise age balanced diet, what is balanced diet? That is give our, our work sedent, uh, when we sleep that amount that is a calculation of balanced diet, of how high energy, energy is separate, calorie need is separate. At least balanced diet containing the carbohydrate, that is the cereals, pulse, that is the root, root, uh, root vegetable, root, root or tuber, green leafy vegetables, and other vegetables, some amount of sugar, the pulse already told some amount of oil and milk is sometimes it is not possible for everyone then what is the availability of concern you make but some food release the dopamine that is the legumes that is the zugard that is any and any ferment, some, some the kimchi, it is a Korean food, that is a fermented vegetables. Another is fermented um, cabbage. So some amount of zugat is important and maybe, maybe the beans. Soya beans is very good. Um, any, any protein can help to release the dopamine. Okay, next question, ma'am, from Saun. Some people say that we should dream high. It is right or wrong? Because if we dream higher than our capability, there is high chance to be failed. First of all, dream. There is, there is a goal. Some, you should realize what is goal, what is objective, what is target. Some, in our medical term, um, that is good doctor. Who every one goal is good doctor. So if you dream good doctor, may may not be possible for good doctor. It depends. It is a multidisciplinary subject. 
what stream we choose it depends on my capability if i dream be a gynecologist but no chance in md then no gynecologist but goal may be a good doctor if any stream you can be a good doctor it is it goal is big but your objective and then target objective means which stream and target is small small one that if you sub one one exam is come every chapter should be reading every chapter day day hour reading how 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 many time you read so we here you you dream is higher what is higher higher dream is happy be happy it is our dream dream should be your happiness it is not depends on guardian guardian dream your dream is your dream i i already told don't please other you search for you yourself you search what is your capability so your dream on that way sometime you you are not a good cook you have a bad handwriting you try 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 but not good handwriting then stop it you you accept your handwriting so accept as you know yourself first what is your capability and try to improve okay thank you ma'am uh, no more question in chat box uh, thank, thank you, you for thank your you valuable all. speech in this situation thank you. thank you thank you so much thank you. now uh, start with the second invited speaker dr montu saha scientist f dipas drdo he pursued his msc and phd degree in physiology he has more than 25 years of research experiences in drdo projects in the area of human performances improvement strategies he served as an external examiner in different institutes such as sports authority of india amiti university manav ratna international university ip university etc he acted as a phd guide in collaboration with the acts as a co guide from the lady irwin college delhi sir pursued professor sr moitra memorial medal award in physiology from psi in 1990 and national science day award from drdo in 2015 He has written three book chapters and published more than twenty-seven research papers in national and international journals. He published more than sixty-five full papers in the proceedings. Sir acted as an invited guest speaker in fifty-two national and international conferences and workshops. He has already five PhD students. In this pandemic situation, just before two months. Dr Saha participated in a TV program conducted by Duradarshan about the yoga for health life but sir uh, for the technical problem we are not able to show the uh, video recording by the youtube uh, i am very sorry sir uh, so i request to dr saha to take over the session welcome sir sir please unmute your microphone i'm audible to you am i audible hello yes sir am i audible am yes, i audible yes sir you are audible okay uh i am thankful to the organizer of this webinar national webinar on development of maintenance of physical and mental wellness during covid-19 pandemic uh, especially to dr manna who always keep in touch with me and giving inspiration for attending and delivering lecture on today's context i am also thankful to my uh, respected sir uh, professor chandra and uh, dr professor gandu gangopadhyay and my respected sir dr khanna 
Dr. Das, and uh, uh, my uh, uh, other uh, partner resource persons. So talking in this uh, concept, if we think uh, today and uh, last uh, few months, we are just watching that uh, every day some record is breaking. And in this record breaking, there is a silver lining of the recovery. Yes, it is there. Earlier, we used to fear of this COVID-19 pandemic. Now we'll learn how to live with this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the thing is very uh, pandemic because there is no medicine, there is no vaccine, there is no treatment. So we have to live with the extreme self-esteem with willpower and physical and mentally fit. So now I can pick a term what I also learned during my school days while practicing yoga, that is Atma Nirvar. Because when we become self-esteem, we should have enough willpower how to live with this crisis. Now I'll go with this uh, topic given by uh, that is role of yoga for better health management in COVID-19 pandemic. The thing is that COVID-19 is a coronavirus infected disease came in 2019. It is a disease and it is caused by the virus corona. All we know because nowadays corona is a household you know, discussion every day, everybody and we are very much accustomed to this situation. Main thing is that it is the detection, follow-up, recovery, stabilization, and uh, precaution, preventive measure. And I would like to mention that uh, the employer, that is the organization I am working, that is DRDO, uh, developed more than 100 products. You can see in the website related to this management, COVID-19 management. And one thing I would like to show with this, uh, <laughs> this uh, webinar lecture, that we have developed this uh, uh, COVID-19 yoga packages. And it has been uh, uh, applicable to this pandemic situation. I'd like to mention that uh, my earlier resource person talked about Dr. Dhara regarding the physical fitness. And uh, Madam Brower also giving lot many, uh, you know, uh, application of neurotransmitter, hormone, and all these things. So today I'd like to give you some idea that you can get all in one in yoga. And all these are proved scientifically with a reputed international journal. This is the one. This is another one. So I'll be talking mainly with this, uh, the concept and proof of this journal material. It is basically an asymptomatic and covered mild, moderate to severe critical. And then there is a follow up session, quarantine, medication, support service, and ventilator if recover. And there is a finally, it is a recovery stage that is a stabilization of parameter to the normal mode. And Moreover, we have to live with the precaution and preventive measure, that is social distance, masks, sanitization, good nutrition, and obviously all in one, that is yoga. I'll come to my next thing. That is, if we see that anybody is having uh, mainly fever, cough, and shortness of breath, so uh, maybe uh, under this uh, surveillance, and then again, it can be happen like muscle ache, confusion, headache, sore throat, Rhinorrhea, chest pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, all these things can come together and uh, can come as a symptomatic evidence of this thing. And cleaning, I'm just touching this because uh, uh, all, uh, uh, although it is a COVID-19 uh, lecture, so I must touch upon a few things. That is the incubation period internationally, uh, uh, internationally given days, it is up to 27 days. Recovery time, three to six weeks. It is given by WHO and frequently reported sign and symptoms like uh, the patient coming fever 77 to 98%, cough is 46 to 82%, like this. And uh, for this uh, 
COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, disease, the fever, dry cough and shortness of breath are very common. Headache, HS, sore throat and fatigue are sometimes it comes and other this diarrhea, it rarely comes. Now it comes at the mild, severe and critical cases. So all we know that is uh, three main things we have to cover if, if anybody uh, got stuck with this thing. It attacks mainly in the respiratory tract by infected droplets, contains coronavirus in the air. That is the main thing. Generally, it is called pneumonia symptoms to lungs, through trachea, to bronchioles and alveoli and blocks oxygenation, affecting capillaries by reducing oxygen saturation arterial, resulting difficulty in breathing, chest pain, coughing, fever, headache, muscle pain, what I have said, all these things. In a very short uh, outline, I'd like to tell you that this is the management of immunity and well-being by vitamin C, E, antioxidants, cortisol, dopamine, and serotonin. All this I'll come in my uh, lecture topic that it has been proved that if a person does yoga, obviously these things are improved and there is an immunity improve, increasing vitamin C antioxidant, stress, anxiety, and depression management, decrease in cortisol level, ACTH, epinephrine and norepinephrine. It gives good sleep and mood, increase BDNF, dopamine and serotonin. Or just, uh, just before Madam told that dopamine and serotonin, it increases and uh, you can all get through this, uh, you know, that by this uh, publication. And there are one more thing that is comorbidity factor, that is obesity, cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory problems like balanced body weight. It decreases yoga, uh, yoga decreases BMI and fat percentage. It controls cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory parameter, decreases blood pressure, cardiometabolic risk factors, improve lung function, it improves oxygen saturation and autonomic factors. These all these things I am talking, nothing is any therape therapeutic process. This all has been used as a preventive measure. And you know, today there is only one thing exists that is preventive measure. And there is no this is, uh, you know, uh, this uh, medication and all these things. So it has, this COVID-19 has now been declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization. And to stop spreading the virus primarily, uh, states adopted national and international worldwide is the lockdown. And suspected people are to be under quarantine in order to control or reduce the spread of coronavirus. Due to the quarantine related situational stress associated with the interruption of the daily normal routine work, this could be resulted boredom of daily lifestyle, eating and nutrition becomes a priority of this time. The current pandemic is an unprecedented war against the unknown novel coronavirus with the body defense mechanism. Immunity of biological system is an inherent characteristics for defending of any microbial or viral attack and disturbing the whole body homeostasis. The outbreak of this pandemic uh, COVID-19 spreads rapidly across the world with an uncontrolled steady rise through its infection right from the day it has started. As there is no proper you know, treatment, all these things, the only possible way is the prevention, what I have said. And now we can uh, have this uh, yoga as an applicable source for getting rid of all these things, which, is, which can be done in a, a priceless manner in your home. And uh, Dr. Uh, Dhara also said some physical activity. Now, sir, I would like to mention that we have standardized uh, Surya Namaskar as a moderate aerobic exercise. So one can do this sort of exercise in the home to get the physical activity in a moderate aerobic limit. limit. And all you know, this uh, yoga is an ancient Indian science. It is proven practice for mind-body purification to asana, pranayam, and meditation. And so it may be used as a preventive therapeutic measure to support this pandemic situation. Long duration yogic practice improves functionality of human physiological system, specifically cardiorespiratory through breathing maneuvers, pranayama, and neuromuscular stretching through yogic postures, mind control through meditation of living healthy all the ages. In this pandemic situation, the world is passing under an unknown state of fear and anxiety, what I have said just now. So we have to 
live with a extreme self esteem will power people with poor immunity respiratory problems obesity and pre existing cardiovascular disease hypertension and other related conditions are more sensitive and facing worst outcome so these people also can avail the advantages of yogic practice because it is not that much tenuous and it has also been working on these things this meditation and anulom vilom pranayama are to be the best practice those who are under this comorbid factor related to the, this pandemic situation and pre existing obesity uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease high blood pressure and cardiac problem is one of the major risk factors for these things on the basis of the research article published in the reputed international journal during this uh, uh, you know this quantum parameters all the supplements are enriched with to improve the immunity power improve the self sleep reducing stress interpersonal relationship and some sort of uh, you know physical activity so all this can be given through this uh, yogic intervention and further during lockdown stress pushes people towards overeating and less physical activity and continuously hearing of uh, reading about the pandemic phase with the uh, this thing they they can, they, they can be a panic with the stressful which is a multi dimensional concept including emotional uh, behavioral cognitive and physiological so all these things can be um, wide out if we take some you know uh, like uh, uh, sleep uh, alleviating factors like serotonin so we can have uh, carbohydrate food and if we can take uh, the serotonin and melatonin uh, consume food like banana in the uh, evening time so it can give a good sleep with the uh, nutrition aspect if we take the milk and milk products that it will also give us a sleep inducing factor and uh, this nutritional aspect but side by side uh, we can take this vitamin c and e all these things like uh, lemon uh, boost immune this can boost immune function potatoes and all these things but uh, one way uh, we can do we can do and uh, take this uh, nutritional factor if we continue this yoga so it will be an added supplement to cope up with the situation because mental stress and all this thing mixing of other you know fit people in the uh, good uh, flora and fauna of the nature so this is another aspect and it gives you a very good uh, unique threshold for these things so to overcome this uncontrolled pandemic situation with effective remarkably body homeostasis by impairing and affecting immunity uh, the factors patient during quarantine phase may uh, supplemented by names of uh, good nutrition and evidence based holistic measure by yogic intervention so these things can be applied and once i just told you that uh, we have uh, developed this uh, uh, drd and uh, uh, the uh, institute i am Uh, serving this is the uh, institute so we have developed you know this uh, uh, one uh, those days it was very much required for collecting swabs and all these things so one of our sister laboratory developed sevak robot for medical use then we are now developing advanced n99 mask sanitizer for everything full face shield pp kit and different type of sanitizer body temperature probe all these things we have made it to give supplement and to the support for the national crisis from our institute after all the ministry of ayus also contributed you can get it from the website that guidelines for yoga practices for this covid 19 which gives a very good input for this pandemic management and we i also showed you that the packages we have developed and it is also available in our website yoga for the covid 19 now the thing is that if i come to the uh, slowly unlock is going on so the greatest thing you can uh, give to the system this pandemic system is a healthy you how much healthy how much fit how much you have a positive wellness so it you can give and this yoga it is the uh, you know combination of this uh, breathing maneuvers and musculoskeletal stretching and it gives a very good things of your respiratory strengthening you know uh, activity and your inner boosting of a hormonal system and your secreting of very good uh, this uh, happy hormone and neurotransmitters like dopamine gamma and all these things 
and uh, you know this yoga can be considered uh, what we are doing is a, a best healthcare gift with no expenditure today's now world and lot of appreciations coming yes during this uh, lockdown and pandemic and quarantine and all these things and you can see during a uh, lot of uh, articles are coming also and idbp one uh, you know unit of minister of home affairs they are also giving yoga protocol during this uh, uh, situation and all you know this yoga are ashtangic yoga following eight protocols uh, it only gives there is no side effect and no investment uh, it is an, uh, also i told that isometric muscular skeletal stretching and there is hat karma called cleansing like nasal cleansing and it is very much important to this pandemic situation pranayama that is the controlled breathing and meditation to keep you calm and cool and you can practice this by there are lot many you know postures sitting standing supine prone inverted balancing combined series or chen relaxing posture calvary posture and meditative posture so all these things are combined together and it is also giving an energy to you not fatigue like physical activity the ultimate end product is the fatigue but after doing yoga your body rejuvenate and you can get energized for your daily activity for your mental boosting and all these things and you know cleansing is a very important thing during this thing that is like neti nauli trataka kapalbhati dhauti and basti so this can be done by the uh, good uh, you know uh, trainer or a yoga teacher and types of pranayama you can do under the restriction of nadi sodan ujje brahmri sidri sitkari vrastika anulom vilam chandravadi but for this pandemic situation you can uh, practice few asanas a few pranayamas anulom vilam nadi sodana ujje all these things and it it will give a very good uh, you know boosting up of your Uh, respiratory breath hold time and lung function activity uh, meditation you can there are lot of meditation practices like mindfulness focus mantra transcendental and guided so guided meditation is the best of these things and it can acts in yoga uh, through three main ways that is preventive curative and promotive so here we can use it mainly 80% from the preventive measure and 10 to 20% for the curative measure those who are under this uh, you know quarantine and all these things but is a preventive measure it is very good and if one practices yoga long duration i hope the self esteem and uh, you know physical fit and mental fit will give them to uh, corona is a good fight from our defense mechanism body defense mechanism it is a combination of controlled breathing focused visualization musculoskeletal stretching mind concentration and relaxation stretch or often known as poses and poses are there is a pause so all these things come from this pause when it is a resting and it can give a hip twist leg lifts leg stretches resting on back shoulder and spinal twist the relaxation time in between the poses is as important as the stretches are in this yoga and you know the thing is that uh, yoga can boost can activate can energize can give all the you know uh, 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 oxygen kinetics mechanism to our musculoskeletal system and other rest of the system in our body like integument system skeletal system muscular nervous system circulatory system endocrine system lymphatic digestive respiratory and urinary system all these systems can be you know uh, get geared up to this yoga and you can get it short duration like a uh, mm, acute uh, this uh, uh, benefit and long duration like chronic benefit and mainly i am just uh, giving a very brief about how it uh, acts on yogic defense mechanism like yogic practice it improves innate immunity it improves natural killer cell cytokine mediators and it improves also this uh, uh sorry comes interferon gamma levels a center regulator of cell mediated immunity having antiviral immune regulatory function so it has come in a uh, another international journal and meditation modulation of stress induced activation of hypothalamus pituitary axis gives you this uh, advantages and improving glycemic control and uh, improving baroreceptor activity decreasing blood pressure and inflammation it also improves 
respiratory function what i said and uh, distress level respiratory distress level and also includes this uh, saturation oxygen and fev1 that is main lung function parameter and uh, benefits of yoga i already uh, told uh, in uh, in a very wider way and uh, it gives everything whatever our uh, required for this pandemic crisis and for the well being of the daily regular activity so it improves physiological well being it improves psychological well being and it improves all our neurotransmitter hormonal and biochemical well being what all these things you can get it uh, in the uh, publication of our deepas publication in the net and now i come to the exploring the science of yoga what i have said and the parameters we have taken in this uh, just i have shown to you is the anthropometric lung function musculoskeletal cardiovascular and cold tolerance endurance activity we have a publication on direct method that is the improvement in aerobic and anaerobic aerobic capacity through yoga mental like cognitive function and psychological parameters also improved and giving a balanced state of the uh, human system and biochemical it improves micronutrient antioxidant oxygen status and stress hormone it reduces and neurotransmitter few it improves so all these things are giving a good uh, improvement in our body posture balance strength flexibility and then uh, it gives a good uh, body range of motion like uh, once we uh, do the surya namaskar we can get the similar benefit like gymnastics and swimming and dance so because you know uh, surya namaskar gives a very uh, all round of exercise musculoskeletal by giving a flexible in the uh, joints spinal cord and other uh, system of our body related to this uh, you know movement and motion, motion and then i come to the next uh, 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 chapter that is the cardiovascular respiratory endurance and circulatory all these things as i said that it improves <coughs> this uh, cardio respiratory cardiovascular by decreasing systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure and we have Uh, you know have seen scientifically on a three healthy population one is 20 to 29 years another is 30 to 39 years and the rest is 40 to 50 years so here we have given yoga intervention and we have found this all these parameters uh, they have improved triglyceride hdl ldl and all these things it has been improved to the normal daily life process and during yogic breathing maneuvers pranayama all these things we have said that cardiac output increases and their aerobic capacity also increases and it has been already uh, proved over here and lung functions pulmonary functions like fev1 fvc and mvb with peak expiratory flow rate all improve significantly those who are practicing yoga and which is very much important during this pandemic uh, situation uh through this pranayama all these things so once your respiratory you know system is very strong and the main uh, you know entry of this uh, virus is the uh, in this system through nasal and uh, water droplets of the corona virus and this systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure as i said it is uh, in the normal balancing state those who are having higher they come to the normal heart rate it decreases and their breath hold time that improves uh now we have seen all these things during this session and aerobic anaerobic i have already said now i come to the main thing that we have seen after yogic practice the main uh, you can you can just uh, you know this uh, you know uh, this news and all these things now it is one parameter is very much popular that is oxygen saturation and it can be Uh, measured by the fingertips and we have seen in a published uh, article that uh, after doing yoga oxygen parameter uh, oxygen parameter uh, concentration improves in a very you know significant way so uh, these are all these things that uh, that's what i have said that it is an all in one you can give a psychological mental and all these things fitness and if one added this uh, yoga with the Uh, you know this regular daily activity so it gives uh, another effect of this thing now i come to this improvement in gastrointestinal endocrine mind concentration mood and attention and reducing anxiety and depression all these things 
uh, you can see that uh, you know uh, we human being are living 24 into 7 under the common factor is the stress and stress physiologically mentally can be uh, controlled by this yoga it has been proved and the main stress factor is the cortisol catecholamine adrenaline and not adrenaline we have seen in that uh, uh, three cohort of subject that epinephrine uh, it you know reduces after the yoga significantly nor epinephrine also reduces dopamine it improves significantly after this yoga serotonin it improves significantly cortisol again reduces significantly and adenocortinotropic hormone that is the stress hormone it also reduces after doing this yoga all these things are in a very picture clear that if you if anyone practices yoga obviously and definitely will get the benefit out of it during the crisis now this uh, we have also you know uh, this uh, analyze this uh, brain uh, parameter like alpha beta gamma and delta uh, brain wave and we have seen that yes brain wave also can be uh, improved and their sleep quality also can be improved by this uh, practicing yoga and their cognitive function like reaction time pattern recognition time all these things we have done it in a <coughs> very uh, coordinated manner and found that it is improved so now if i call if i uh, come Uh, with the you know um, together like <clears throat> adrenaline not adrenaline uh, uh, these factors are uh, you know decreased and other neurotransmitter good neurotransmitter that is dopamine serotonin gaba acetylcholine glutamate and endorphins it has all improved like endorphins it improves this euphoric and better mood of our system <clears throat> now finally i come to the immunity antioxidant ldl hdl and climate tolerance of the yogi contribution here i would like to mention that yoga it improves and proved is a proven fact that it improves immunity by increasing antioxidant vitamin c vitamin e and other product which is concerned to this immunity level so these are the things which we can get it total uh, you know beneficial package from yoga and it helps to withstand any adverse and extreme environmental stress maintains optimum physical fitness and mental performance of the practitioner in this pandemic situation uh, in hospitable climate trade and condition where coming out open air is very much you know vulnerable uh, restricted uh, during uh, lockdown and unlock and all these things and extreme cold like uh, uh, we can do it in our home setup with a very confined uh, you know uh, this thing and now we have done this thing on uh, i have said it is a, a preventive way and if i finally come to this uh, conclusion part that uh, it uh, gives the health benefit of parasympathetic domination and musculoskeletal relief from musculoskeletal pain this relieves stress and hypertension it improves physical performance it controls aging improves digestion it lowers the blood sugar giving positive to the diabetic patient that it gives a very good pregnancy uh, you know this matter and all these things sleep uh, improves lung function improves and the areas of our uh, this yoga we have done in all the aspect of our armed forces altitude on board ship submarine air force desert antarctica sea voyage to the sea and stress management protocol so all these things we have done uh, and here also we have found that uh, yes it also controls the thyroid t4 uh, you know hormone of our body as compared to the non yogic practitioners similarly it controls the uh, you know uh, acclimatization uh, season that who, those who are visiting to the high altitude like headache breathlessness nausea and vomiting lack of appetite dryness of nose fatigue and giddiness all these things are controlled by this yogic package and has been you know we carried out uh, in our forward area uh, practically in the field condition and uh, as i said so this thing can be happened and one uh, one thing we have also found that uh, in a sick, uh, thermal signature that during yoga your body temperature improves and it is applicable to the 
you know uh, cold area siachen and all these areas and also uh, there is a you know prevention factor of uh, this uh, there are certain pranayama like sitkari and sitli which improves your uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, re- uh, relieving factor in the desert area like it it gives a cooling effect to your body and uh, now we have a uh, you know a laboratory setup at the world's highest point of uh, uh, changla in our country and uh, there are a lot of publication have come in our uh, this uh, this thing and we are regularly organizing yoga in our uh, department and uh, also associated with a l- lot many uh, assignment with this Uh, yoga application to our uh, soldiers and uh, our forces and in summary i can uh, give you the sum up it helps to develop the physiological homeostasis of the individual through musculoskeletal and breath control methods and evidence shows that regular practice of asanas pranayama meditation it uh, increases vitality strengthening muscle uh, neuromuscular uh, activity more physical flexibility reducing and delineated psychological stress reducing cardiovascular risk better lung function improves endurance and immunity factor and practice of yoga helps to improve cardiovascular respiratory reserve isometric muscular power and maintain physical fitness it also helps to maintain optimum autonomic nervous balance and improve central nervous system function sympathetic and parasympathetic improve psychomotor performance and learning ability with the reduced anxiety and depression so uh, in this uh, thing so uh, in conclusion the thing is that now when <coughs> the ministry of ayush and there is a proof of uh, giving yoga uh, for this mental stress as a boosting of this crisis so it can be beneficial if we practice yoga uh, under the supervision of a teacher or a guider then it can be benefited for this living stress free life in this pandemic covid-19 situation thank you am i audible yes sir yes sir you audible hello ha uh, 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 thank you very much sir for this uh, wonderful presentation uh, in this uh, trying time we are going we all are going through so it's a relevant uh, topic that you have discussed today and uh, we are getting a lot of questions in the comment section so i will okay. uh, make them visible uh, to your screen and you can see from there uh what i can see that what type of yoga is ideal as preventive am i audible sir uh, perfectly you are perfectly audible so what type of yoga mainly pranayam meditation is the type of yoga for this pandemic situation and if a person is uh, uh, younger age with more uh, fitness parameter can do yoga as as usual like few uh, prone asanas uh, not head down but uh, can be done uh, uh, this uh, yoga in this situation thank you what any vital symptoms of covid 19 so question is not completed yet Uh, yes because so, i have already discussed the uh, vital symptoms of covid 19 that is uh, shortness of breathing temperature and all these things this is a medical point of view i just touched upon in my uh, lecture earlier thank you sir uh, there are more questions but uh, due to the paucity of time uh, we are not in a position to take more questions so i think uh, uh, you will pardon us for that so uh, we will uh, move to the next session to our next speaker uh, for that i request uh, sujo adi thank you thank you
Tanmay, any other question? Okay. Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation and very informative for this situation. And our next and last speaker, invited speaker, is Dr. Prashun Priya Naik. He is acting as Associate Professor, Department of Physiology, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Jodhpur, Rajasthan. He received MSc in Physiology from the University of Calcutta in 1991 and MS in Medical Physiology from Sikkim Monipal University in 2002. He pursued two PhD degree, one is Physiology from University of Calcutta in 1991 and another PhD in Medical Physiology from Chetinad Academy of Research and Education in 2014. He has more than 28 years teaching experience in different college and institutes. He is acting as an associate professor at Department of Physiology, All India Institute of Medical Science, Jodhpur, from June 2017 to till now. He awarded Professor P. B. Sen Memorial Oration in 2017 and also awarded Professor B. B. Sarkar Memorial Oration in 2011 by Physiological Society of India. He achieved gold medal in 1989 from the Bidyashagur University. He guides their PhD students in collaboration with several institutes, that is Ames, Jodhpur, Dr. Entier University of Health Sciences, Bijwara, Nai, KL University, Guntur, Tatia University, Sri Ganganagar, and Acharjo Nagarjun University, Guntur. He published more than 38 research papers in national and international journals. He participated more than 100 national and international conferences. He is member of many learned bodies and also member of nine editorial board of international journals. He is acting as a reviewer of 14 journals. With this introduction, I request to take over the session. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, that's that's a, a very good uh, introduction. So, good afternoon, everyone. We are towards the end of webinar development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during COVID-19 pandemic. The title here. It is organized by the Department of Physiology, Midnapur College, Autonomous, and the Physiological Society of India. Here, I am not able to refrain myself without sharing that I am an ex-student of Department of Physiology, Midnapur College. It's really great pleasure to be invited as speaker at the Parent Institute as alumnus and as Vice President of the Parent Society. Thanks a lot to the member of organizing committee. I wish to convey my sincere thanks to the organizers, especially Dr. Indranil, for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts regarding physiological <clears throat> well-being during COVID-19 pandemic in this platform of Midnapur College Autonomous and the Physiological Society of India. Uh, May I have my slides, please? Yes, sir. They are visible yeah. now. Thank you. Individual well-being is a multi-dimensional issue. Well-being is a feeling which based on pillars like physical and mental health, financial condition, professional competence, satisfaction, and social atmosphere along with community involvement, along with their interaction. Before I start the physiological well-being, I would while all my audience viewers, they are going through this disclaimer. I would like to greet those young 
scientific minds who are attending this webinar it's really nice to see so many students are attending this webinar from different backgrounds and many of them are from physiology backgrounds it's really nice to have you all here i really welcome you all in this webinar as already i have mentioned that physical and mental financial social community professional all of them they are involved in the individual well being so we need to understand the individual well being one should consider their physical and mental involvement with all the components of well being and circumstances around themselves not only well being well being is not only the absence of disease or illness but a sense of positive feelings which include the family members people around you friends neighbors coworkers which will give you a power of autonomy self acceptance mastery in social involvement positive attitude as already i have men mentioned and a purposeful meaning of your life starting with the physical and mental well being all of us particularly those who are uh, from physiology background or uh, for that respect nowadays everybody knows this basic physiological concepts that energy input and energy output should be balanced in this balance the food what we are taking they not only give us the energy they provide the micronutrients and the micronutrients this must be balancing the sufficient supply of energy to the energy output energy cost of daily goals as well as physical activities this daily physical activities they help us to have a beautiful balanced organized sleep wake cycle which in turn actually give us the benefit of having good good daily activity so which will be helping us to get have the energy input there are endorphins which are endorphins encephalins they comes out when we do enjoy our physical activities they help keep our mood elevated so mental support is giving us better energy output which is a cycle positive cycle between the physical and mental activities these higher activities better activities allow us to have good food to enjoy with the source of hunger and micronutrients sufficient micronutrients they they help us in the metabolism so we are enjoying the physical and mental mental balances with the help of support of energy balance coming to the professional part it starts with training so as we, as i can see many of us uh, many of our audience uh, they are participants they are in the training phase they are from third semester to fifth semester many of them and few are on the research training they this after the training they get opportunity or they have to grab the opportunity they have to show their performance develop network uh, enjoy the job whatever they do along with that they should give some satisfaction all these are involved with the updation what we are doing now updating ourselves give us a professional improvement this professional improvement it's a lot of mental involvement your feeling happy sense of feeling happy positive attitude that gives you this support ah uh, not only in ex energy money wise we should meet the expenditure and the earnings 
if we have a little bit of savings maybe little maybe little more maybe a quite more we feel happy in financially so when i am alone happy in the financially it's not sufficient enough it should be colony it should be groups they make a better village better better colony better town which will be going into a better district better uh, uh, block like that sub organizational structure better district better state and the nation wide or you can say it's global wide so the financial happiness financial well being is not only single person having financial support not only having single person savings it's the global it's the people around you that concept of people around you gives us that feeling of social well being it's a two way happiness being happy because of others at the same time making others happy here what we are talking about happiness about others that is who are in contact with us who are known to us so that's the social we are basically innately social creature we live together clustered in groups around our habitats and naturally we feel better when we are connected socially now if we define those social gathering as people and particularly those whom we didn't know even whom we never in contact along with them if the place where we live and the policy if all these things they make us happy they all of them they are doing well then the community well being comes in so thus all things not only individual not only personal physical or mental development we need to take care about the social and community well being along with financial and professional well being all put together we come to this context of individual well being coming to covid 19 that's the topic covid 19 pandemic it's a corona virus but i am sure all the participants by this time with so many uh, information around everybody knows what is corona virus it's a large family of viruses that cause a wide range of illness from the common cold to more severe disease it started with uh, bat that's how we came in came to know that uh, the corona virus has came to animal to bat and from there further via pangolins it came to us human actually this is not the first time even before that we have several corona virus in infections several corona virus seasons among them in 2003 we had the sars cov sars corona virus 2012 we had mars corona virus and now we have very more deadly sars corona virus 2 i am not going into details of these things because these are already known by every one of us the 2019 sars cov 2 that's the virus name given by the virology society 2019 sars cov 2 was identified as the coronavirus strain responsible for causing the disease covid 19 and march 11 2020 it is announced as pandemic announced by who as pandemic throughout the world everywhere almost everywhere we have the damage of 2019 sars cov 2 coming to the structure there are spike proteins membrane glycoproteins and inside we have a positive single stranded rna 
spike proteins on the surface of the coronavirus bind with angiotensin converting enzyme 2 on the surface of the target cell. The type 2 transmembrane serine protease that allow these S2 to enter coronavirus inside the cell and then it get multiplied. This is now I believe everyone particularly those who are from young mind colleges, college students, they everyone know about these details. <laughs> A little bit of physiology of angiotensin. Angiotensinogen as you know is a plasma protein having 452 amino acids which is synthesized by liver by like most other plasma proteins however its processing in our body is very interesting the renin enzyme produced from the justa glomerular cells of kidney first make the angiotensin 1 this is angiotensin 1 comprising of Amino terminal 1 to 10 amino acids. These numbers are showing the number of amino acids. Then the S enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which is an octapeptide. This is commonly known in our renin angiotensin system for long term regulation of blood pressure. Here we are taking the physiological concepts towards the pathological concept. As I have mentioned, I have kept the topic as physiological well-being. We are trying to understand the angiotensin, how physiology of angiotensin, which is commonly studied by us, all physiologists, and other people, they do study the renin angiotensin system, how it is taken care by, means actually uh, hijacked by the coronavirus. S2, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, which convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 1 to 9, and then at same angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin 1 to 7, and then a decarboxylase enzyme remove the decarboxyl carboxyl group decarboxylate the angiotensin 1 to 7 and this form is taken care of <coughs> this S2 is a membrane bound enzyme this Angiotensin 2 via alternative pathway a prolyl carboxylase prolyl carboxylase ready take remove this <coughs> to prolyl, first one first amino terminal amino acid to angiotensin 2 to 8 and then angiotensin 3 to 8, 3 to 7, this is second type of processing. So this is first type of processing, alternative processing and the another processing. Neprilysin, another enzyme, prolyl carboxylase, remove the three amino acid directly from this angiotensin to angiotensin 1 to 7. <laughs> These are done by aminopeptidase A and aminopeptidase N. All these, they can join, they can come to the angiotensin receptor type 1, angiotensin receptor type 2, G protein coupled receptor mass, angiotensin type 2, type 4 and the mass D type. All these receptor pathways different receptor pathways they can utilize and after utilizing these different pathways angiotensin 1 to 8 that is the normal angiotensin 2 help us in maintaining the hemodynamics 
as we already know and also help in wound healing and tissue regeneration whereas angiotensin 1 to 7 which is a product of S2 it is also involved in the wound healing process and reduction of re reactive oxygen species antioxidant functions the product angiotensin 1 to 9 is also used in as anti-inflammatory activity to compare these two functions one is via 81 or 82 receptors here via mass receptor we could see that it is contradicting each other vasoconstriction hypertrophy fibrosis proliferation atherosclerosis natriuresis diuresis all places all physiological activities it is contradicting each other so the s2 and s protein these two proteins they are giving a specific physiological process which are contradicting each other. So, S2 is a metallopeptidase which is expressed in almost all the major viral target cells like type 2 pneumocytes and enterocytes. Its catalytic domain binds to the surface spike protein SARS-CoV-2 with high affinity. So, membrane bound S2, it can bind, but before it binds, there is another protein, Adam. A disintegrating green and metallopeptidase domain, catalytic protein, which is cleaving the S2 and this part of S is S2 is binding with SARS-CoV-2 and there is no duplication. On the other way, another type 2 transmembrane serine protease another proteolytic enzyme can do help the binding of SARS-CoV-2 and allow this to come inside and cause duplication. So depending on the presence of ADAM17 or PMPRSS2, S2 whether it will bind as a whole or as fraction that is decided. So, S2 can bind with SARS-CoV and can allow it to come inside the cell cause duplication. This is the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. As you can see, two arrowheads. Cathepsin and TMPRSS2, TMPRSS4, human airway tract, tripsin like protease, all these enzymes, they can clean and allow this fusion peptide to active. Whereas S1 and S2, this site is also cleaved by TMPR cathepsin. Basically, TMPRSS2 also is clipped by TMPRSS2 and allow the protein, the spike protein to get bind with the cell membrane. The receptor binding domain, which is of SARS-CoV-2 of S S1 subunit, this receptor binding domain binds with the peptidase do peptidase peptidase domain sorry peptidase domain of 
S2. This is S2 structure. Then the ectodomen cleavage by Adam 17 or endodomen cleavage by TMPRSS2, both of them they allow the viruses to come inside the cell. So from this point we understood that S2 is important to bind with the SARS-CoV-2 and allow them to come inside the cell. However, there is one step where Adam-17 is binding, causing cleavage and allowing the SARS-CoV-2 to remain as outside the cell, not allowing it to come inside the cell. So, if we think of the physiology and the pathological condition, normally S and S2, they are balancing each other. If there is an increase in S, there will be an increase in S2. If there is an increase in S2, there will be an increase in S and vice versa. Whereas, when they are not able to maintain this balance, we go into pathological condition. Normal physiological conditions, as you can see here, S2 pathway is helping to balance the wrong doing of S. At the same time, by presence of SARS-CoV-2, the S2 pathway, because the S2 is being hijacked by the SARS-CoV-2. So, S2 pathway is no more available. So, not only the virus is entering into the cell and causing duplication, we are going into a state where the S2 levels are not sufficient physiologically. So, we are facing a two-step threat by the SARS-CoV-2. One is SARS-CoV is utilizing the S2 and blocking its physiological activities. So, if, if we compare the S2 and S pathway, if S2 is greater, we are going towards a better health. If S is greater, we are going towards a poorer health. Remember, I am saying it is not the physiological condition. It is in pathological conditions. Physiologically, we need S as well as S2 both. Pathological conditions, if pathologically S2 is greater or pathologically if S is greater. So, we need to control the level of S2. If it is not sufficient, then we need to provide S2. Comorbid conditions like hypertension, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, all these factors, they reduce the, normally they reduce the level of S2. And because of S level of S2 is decreased, the severity is increased. Severity of COVID-19 is increased. There are some experiments, some studies where human recombinant soluble S2 is supplied and they proved that even in comorbid condition, the severity of the SARS-CoV-2, severity of the COVID-19 could be controlled by the human recombinant soluble S2. Here, we can produce endogenously the S2. Physical exercise, as you can see, it can stimulate via the protein expression microRNA activity. It can stimulate the S2 pathway and we can go towards a beneficial effect. Exercise training, 
can augment the S2. 2017 publication, 2020 publication and high exercise volume but not low exercise volume. So can also can give a better protective effects against the diet induced obesity model. So not only providing the better health, it can control, can check the comorbid situations. S2 may reduce anxiety like behavior by activating the central mass receptor which facilitate the GABA release onto the pyramidal neurons within basolateral amygdala 2016 study. So S2 over expression has anxiolytic effects on both male and female mice where transgenic this is the transgenic mice where S2 is overexpressed. S2 not only giving benefit physiologically, it can give benefit in psychological, mental condition also. Anxiety also can be reduced. S2 can reduce the viral load and it has been proposed that S2, measurement of S2 can be a good measurement of severity. So, if there is X2 expression, there is more chance of S2 shedding, so that viral load is reduced and by shedding, we are actually increasing the soluble level of S2, so that the cycle, threshold cycle, you must have already learned about the threshold cycle, which indicates the infectiousness of this viral virus that can be in control. So, S2 is giving us a condition in three way benefit. Number one, it is giving physical benefit. Number two, mental. Number three, it can give the benefit in terms of viral, viral severe disease severity control. So, one side it is controlling the comorbid condition one side it is controlling the psychological uh, upliftment and another side it is reducing. So we should have a condition where S2 could be improved and already many of uh, our my uh, earlier speakers they have mentioned about the yoga or physical exercise and I have also shown the references where we could see that exercises can improve the level of S2. Now, if we think of the COVID-19 pandemic, presence of COVID-19, I am isolated, I am not uh, doing, uh, not happy to do all the daily scores, not the physical activities. So, there is a disturbance of sleep, sleep, wakefulness cycle, depression, insufficient energy in output, insufficient energy input. So, there is nutritional deficiency could also come, which in turn, diminishes the physical as well as mental health. Coming to the financial and professional conditions, lockdown effects, physical inability, healthcare expenditure, all are bringing down the individual income. So there is a less regeneration, less national economic, economy overall economic slowdown. This is also support also um, complexed by the work from home situation. So our financial and professional well-being is also at threat because of COVID-19. COVID-19 is also giving us a fear of as madam has already uh, mentioned about the fear, fear of infection, fear of losing job, fear of uh, uh, like being contacted, getting infected, fear of infecting others. So there is a social anxiety and community wise we are practicing social distancing along with physical distancing. Social distancing is increasing the vertical distancing between us whereas horizontal distancing is increased by the physical distancing. So that there is an inequality in the society or community as such. 
uneven distribution of properties so that it keeps on so again we are going into a negative feedback vicious cycle so this that's how the covid 19 is the, the pandemic is controlling is uh, like uh, hampering the social and community well-being this is the latest data today total 34 lakh 63,972 cases which is from in one day it is 76,000 increase. So there is a continuous increase in COVID cases. As you can see day wise, this is yesterday's data, day wise every day we are getting around 2%. Today there is no gain, uh, not much of not more than 77. So every day we are getting around 76,000 as you can see here. So it is increasing and giving us challenges like experience problem, management problem, economic problem, social threat, frontline health services being hampered like anything. COVID warriors, uh, we, we, we are in shortage, we, we can't keep pro providing the supplies of uh, doctors, nurses, uh, paramedics, associated health burden because of the corona, because of the COVID, we are losing our eyes from other disease problems like tuberculosis, like diabetes, like dengue, like many other. Then because of the lockdown, because of the economic crisis, we are sort of supply chain. Ignorance and incognizance. We are not ready to accept many things. We have, we are facing many new things. So it will take some time. Plus the natural calamities, the problems faced by some other places where it is not directly related with the COVID problems, but they are affecting us. These are the crises. In this crisis, we, if we are little cognizant, little understanding, understandable that, okay, we should not keep spreading. We should break the chain. As you can see here, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> This is a chain of infection. This chain should be broken. So how we can do this chain breaking? By obviously by isolating ourselves. But while I, we are isolating, we should keep in mind to increase the physical activity, increase our immunity, increase our power to fight against COVID-19 by physical activity so that we can have better cardiac activities. These better cardiac activities will provide better pulsatile flow to the endothelial cells and those cells will produce S2. Then S2 will inhibit fibrosis, inflammation, oxidative stress, reduce anxiety so that we can improve the physical as well as mental well-being which are better health, providing better health. So if we break the chain, we can go into this good side and we can face the problems tough to maintain healthy lifestyle uncertainty in finance worries for family members job security and work from home pressure these problems we can face those students for those for them it's like uh, semi permeable everybody must be knowing about semi permeable here I am presenting something where one individual is isolated from the COVID-19 cases so that it can it can protect itself, it can protect themselves that okay, I, I, I am protected, fine, nice. But along with that, what we are doing, we are protect, we are isolating us from the physical activities, from the nutrition, we are, we are not ready to um, go out and do the physical activity. We are not ready to oh, meet the shopkeeper and uh, we are not getting sufficient nutrition. We are protect, isolating us from the community, from the society, from the professional involvements, from the financial involvements, other health supports what we need. From that we should not do. That is actually doing wrong things. 
so what we should do we should use isolation as a semi permeable membrane semi permeable means we should keep the covid 19 away from them we should isolate the person from the covid 19 but we should have some physical activity even within within the restricted space within the restricted place we should do it we should welcome the knowledge updates we should keep ourselves updated we should take care that we are getting sufficient nutrition part of the financial involvement we should take part professional involvement so we should take part we should be part of the society we should be part of the community as well as other health issues other comorbidity they should not down us so that then only we can have the individual well being physiological well being but when to have this physical activity how to do this physical activity and what type of physical activity or other activities other well being factors how when and what we should do that's the discretion of the individual we should be open to the things but protecting ourselves from the problems from the covid 19 thank you that's all from my side and uh, i have just tried to give you give you a concept of uh, what is physiological well being and how physiological well being how the physiologists can take part in the well being in the uh in the protection in the uh, what is the physiological basis of this individual well being that is what i have said hope you have enjoyed and uh, i am not sure whether you have many questions or not what type of things are there let us see and uh, you are welcome to uh, send me questions thank uh, thank you sir thank you very much for this uh, informative session and uh, uh, actually we are amazed to see uh, uh, the way you speak uh, we have got to uh, hear for the second time again so uh, thank you very much uh, for this exhaustive and uh, all researched uh, uh, talk that you have delivered today so we are uh, making the questions visible from uh, the questions dropped by the audience in the comment section of youtube and facebook so this is for uh, you sir yeah uh, komi datta has asked about how we can develop hard immunity is it all uh, is it at all possible i think that's what she asked uh, personally i i believe that uh, as you know it's a basically uh, sari serious adverse influenza like uh, condition related to influenza and we know all of us we know that influenza we don't get immunity about in against influenza so immunity getting immunity is really tough and as the information coming out uh, like even though there are some antibody development some immunity is developed but it is not long lasting the antibodies are not well traceable and uh, it's a uh, even if in some cases it is found it is not uh, long lasting and few cases even in india i believe uh, few cases have been already seen where uh, second time recurrence of the covid in covid infection so i am really doubtful about the hard immunity against this but if you say that improving the immunity against all types of uh, problems then i agree that it is possible we can have a better lifestyle we can have a better nutrition better uh, management then we can have a, as al- i think already have been uh, exp- uh, explained about the hand hygiene respiratory hygiene uh, social hygiene social etiquette if we maintain that will be sufficient to keep at least uh, the infections at distance we should be behaving uh, you know responsible that's why i feel it's more important than the than thinking about the immunity does asymptomatic covid infected individuals have a lower viral load uh, 
uh, in fact uh, the viral load itself is a, a big questionable uh, questionable point the asymptomatic covid infected individuals not necessarily they will be having the lower viral load because uh, asymptomatic because they are uh, they can withstand like as i have mentioned during the talk that uh, as2 if it is already good in amount it is uh, sufficient in sufficient to uh, fight with the infecting agents then we can have as we can have asymptomatic condition we can have a delayed state to out come out break the symptoms so covert conditions uh, remaining there they may have uh, different types of uh, viral load and uh, the viral load and infectivity infectiousness is not the same thing so viral load could be less could be more and even some situations are there where people are uh, with uh, comorbid conditions they are uh, found positive but they are uh, they remain asymptomatic thank you very much sir uh, we are uh, at the end of uh, we are actually towards the end of uh, this webinar on covid so thank you very much uh, thank you once again on behalf of the department of physiology and uh, mindapur college thank you very much thank sir. you thank you for giving me the opportunity it's really nice and, to have you and hope uh, we will get your uh, help or your guidance uh, if we need in uh, time to come sure sure now i would now request uh, our uh, professor dr vishrup shorkar uh to take the charge of the session so am i audible hello am i audible yes sir, yes, sir you are audible hello am i audible yes sir you are uh, perfectly audible yeah so uh thank you uh, professor tonmay kundu uh for offering me to take the charge uh of the concluding part of this uh, seminar so uh, <clears throat> uh yeah, yes really we have reached finally to the concluding part and it's a customary to give a vote of thanks to all the uh, listeners and participants are invited guests and distinguished persons So first of all uh, may i take the privilege before to give my talk uh may i request any of our distinguished uh, guests and invited lecture lecture or speaker to say something about uh it is something the concluding part of this extensive seminar is anybody interested may i request may i request uh, professor amar kumar chandra to say something about well, thank you <coughs> okay uh, so i am audible yes hello yes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes sir uh, we have started the session at about 11:10 and it is now almost 3 or post 3 and in the meantime we, we have attended the session of four scientists first of all the lecture was delivered by professor prakash chandra dara and he in his lecture he showed the importance of a uh, physical exercise during covid 19 Pro professor kokas dara is a man of man of what physiology force physiology and so on so he has oriented the lecture in such a way by which it becomes audible among the participants in his lecture he showed how physical exercise may combat with the covid 19 it is a nice presentation 
when the lecture was delivered by Professor Bau, and he sees from the community department of Vijay Sagar of Minnapur Medical College, and <coughs> she traced the need of psychology or neurophysiology, emotion, mentality, attitude, etc., to combat COVID-19. It is a good lecture, and he uh, this, he, he see, see in her lecture in an elaborated way gave presentation about the nervous system initially and after and after that she tried to correlate how the COVID-19 may be tackled with the help of uh, neurophysiology or DAV. And her lecture was delivered by Dr. Muntu Saha from the past. We are aware that Dr. Muntu Saha, not for the timing, but for a long time, is associated with the yoga research. And his lectures came to me in such a way that I feel if yoga is practiced, each but an individual, then uh, we can combat COVID-19. It is a nice presentation. And in the course of the lecture, he told us about some brochures which are with him or the past, and if these are provided to the coordinator, then it will be beneficial for us. And last lecture was of Professor Kusin Pionayo. It is very good. It is a review type of lecture, and he brought almost all the entire thing, the recent researches on COVID-19, and he tried to correlate the physiology and the pathophysiology of COVID-19 in a very nice, lucy, as well as a diagrammatic representation. My heartfelt thank also to Dr. Prasant Pionai. So I believe that I know how many participants are there, what is their background, but I feel that okay. all these projects will enrich them in a in a much much way now and now i feel that the community of physiology community now very much thinking to prevent and control covid 19 they have given their details exposure for the participants for the uh, resource person and so on so in one word i can say that um, the webinar on development and maintenance of physical and mental wellness during COVID-19 pandemic by Medipur College Autonomous in collaboration with the Physiological Society of India is a grand success. I thank all the organizers as well as the research, research person and also uh, the coordinator of this um, of this webinar. Thank you all. So thank, thank you, you uh, uh, thank you, Professor uh, Amor Kumar for your nice uh, sum up the whole uh, uh, seminar series. So next, uh, may I request uh, any of our distinguished person uh, being present over there? May I request Professor Somnath Dongopadhyay? He is not there. He is not there, sir. He is okay. not in the room. So, uh, may I request any of our invited lecturers if they want to say something about uh, the concluding part? Okay. Uh, so, uh, is Dr. there any, any? Is there? Yeah. Professor Naik, uh, would you like to say something at the concluding part of this extensive uh, seminar series? Uh, it's really nice to uh, have this type of webinar, particularly from uh, organizing for the students. It's so nice. I really congratulate the organizing committee, organizing members to have this and uh, so nicely it is organized, giving 
all the aspects particular with a special emphasis to the physical activity which is uh, like uh, must be brought into the limelight in this situation this is a pandemic situation in this situation there is a uh, cloud of fear everywhere so how to overcome this stress of fear stress of being infected those stress it's nicely divided nicely distributed by all the lectures all the participants so i i really congratulate it's uh, so nice and uh, thank you all thank you thank you very much for organizing this type of uh, webinar and the society physiological society of india it's taking its uh, charge and uh, taking uh, responsibility to disseminate the knowledge this way it's very encouraging and i hope the uh, young budding students budding physiologists they will come forward and they will take interest in development of the subject as well as in the in they will get involved in the health research thing in future thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity so thank you professor nayak so finally uh, on behalf of the department of physiology in the pune college autonomous and uh, physiological society of india uh, i'd like to conclude finally with a few uh, words and uh, Vote of thanks. So, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank and extend my heartiest uh, uh, thanks to our beloved and respected principal, Dr. Gopal Chandra Pera, for his consistent and persistent support and promotion. Uh, unless this uh, 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 big seminar wouldn't have been possible. so thank you sir for your uh, kind cooperation and valuable time to uh, inaugurate the session next i'd like to thank our uh, 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 convener dr indronil manna and i must uh, congratulate and extend my uh, uh, respect and uh, well wishes for manna for his uh, laborious job to make it a success i know for the last few uh, weeks uh, he was consistently working hard for this uh, seminar to become a successful seminar next i'd like to uh, thank our honorary president of psi professor amar kumar chandra for your uh, 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 for your uh, beautiful words and uh, advice to the young generation and all the listeners especially the students of our college and college and students of other colleges then the honorary secretary professor shumna dangopadhyay for your beautiful uh, uh, address as a uh, secretary to the uh, uh, full uh, uh, program then i'd like to uh, thank uh, professor g l khanna though he was uh, not present over here Uh, due to some unavoidable uh, circumstances he was not present and then i would like to thank specially to professor kushal dash as a special guest from department of physiology bld university karnataka uh, i must say something uh, about his uh, lecture topic in brief he reminds us the challenging role of our frontline activities in medical professionals in pandemic situations in spite of this fact he has elaborately described the lifestyle crisis and management in patients and all hospital staff so thank you professor kushal das for your active participation in this uh, uh, seminar then i'd like to thank especially our beloved uh, uh, very well known professor professor prakash chandra dhara director dde Uh, with dashakur university uh, for your uh, illuminating topic on importance of phys physical exercise for physical wellness during covid-19 pandemic professor uh, dhara talked elaborately on exercise and immunity uh, uh, as a mechanism uh, and the mechanism of boosting through elaboration of intermediate mediators 
correlated exercise and pain management and depression and mood uh, through elaboration of endogenous opiates. He mentioned specifically the role of uh, encephalin and endorphin. He also stressed on benefit of exercise on secondary infections. He emphasized on the type and duration of exercise across different ages and victims of chronic diseases. He mentioned WHO recommendations of typical exercise regimen uh, or cardiorespiratory benefit to support life in these odd situations. He also emphasized on yoga and breathing exercises. He emphasized on management of nostril breathing and abdominal breathing as a regular a regulator of autonomic balance. He emphasized that final motto is to tune our parasympathetic tone, higher the parasympathetic tone, better is the condition for health. He didn't forget to emphasize on sports person in pandemic situations and prescribed what to do, what not to do. I must thank uh, our invited lecturer, Professor uh, Boyjanti Baur, Professor Dr. Boyjanti Baur, Professor and Head Department of Community Medicine, Midnapur Medical College and Hospital. Her topic was uh, simple ways to become mentally stronger and fearless. She lucidly elaborated the functional localization of human brain and essential role of neurotransmitters and their management as the fundamental platform to become mentally strong and to overcome the state of fear. She emphasized on the practice of being empathic rather than sympathetic in every respect of uh, treating mental illness and generalized depression in patients of pandemic situation, in pandemic situations as medical practitioners. She has mentioned the role in a, uh, a role as a practitioner with a holistic approach to treat body, mind, and soul through appropriate counseling with requisite medications. She emphasized on boosting of wellness as antidote. In this regard, she emphasized on the positive role of dopamine and mentioned behavioral manifestations as a way to boost dopamine. She also mentioned the role of encephalin and endorphin like the way Professor Dhara mentioned it and mentioned the ways to boost this safeguard in order to overcome negative feelings. She talked uh, about risk management to overcome challenging situations by uh, utilization of neurophysiological knowledge and practice. She emphasized on positive pleasure seeking attitudes and practices to overcome pessimism and despair. I must thank Dr. Montu Shaha, scientist F. Deepas Diardio Delhi. His topic was role of yoga for better health management in COVID-19 pandemic situation. He explained yoga as a measure to be atmanirbhar and preventive. He described wide spectrum of yoga benefits in terms of scientific research. He emphasized on cardiorespiratory improvement to achieve oxygen saturation at vital organs for homeostasis and immunity. He described yoga as a holistic approach to tune our body, mind, and soul to support proper beneficial homeostatic changes to combat generalized stress and overcome crisis. He mentioned especially some asanas and pranayamas. As, as for example, he mentioned shurjya pranam and unulom bilom breathing exercise he talked about cognitive improvement to yoga and achieving positive sense of mind and attitude. In this regard, he mentioned the role of dopamine, serotonin, calicolamine, and cortisol. I must thank Professor Roshun Priya Nayak, Department of Physiology, AIMS, Jodhpur. His topic was physiological well-being during COVID-19 pandemic. He critically emphasized on multitude of factors influencing individual well-being. He talked about balanced diet and meaningful activities for physical and mental well-being. He justified the essence of humanness with two-way happiness and therefore emphasized on healthy interpersonal relationship as a measure of healthy homeostatic modifications to heal and prevent from inside. He emphasized on the positive role of exercise 
on a stew-mediated benefit of health in holistic sense, that is physical and mental health. Uh, the whole uh, seminar was concentrated, so far I was listening over there, uh, there is a dogma that uh, the physical dexterity is directly proportional to the mental dexterity and vice versa. So if there is a good physical well-being, there will be a mental well-being. And if there is a good mental well-being, there will be a good physical well-being. So it is uh, uh, a very much related fact. So all our listeners, all our uh, uh, speakers, they have emphasized on this very central dogma that is physical dexterity and mental dexterity, they are interrelated with each other. So I must thank uh, Dr. Shaptadeep Samanto, HOD, and convener, Dr. Sudhamoy Ghosh, coordinator PG, as member of the organizing committee. I must thank the scientific subcommittee, me as a convener of this uh, subcommittee. I must thank Dr. Uh, uh, Sujaya De and Dr. Shidhatu Shankar Dash. And uh, registration subcommittee, I must thank uh, Professor Shapul Kanti Bera, convener, Mr. Hiranmay Mahato, Mr. Pradeep Jana, and Mr. Shubrata Hajra. And certificate subcommittee, I must thank uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Madhuvanti Bepari, convener, and Dr. Payal Maiti, Sri Obhijit Panik, and Sri Guru Pado Maiti. I must thank, and it's a special thank, of course, to our uh, most uh, beloved. Uh, uh, assistant professor from the Department of English for his consistent support as a technical, uh, uh, in technical assistance. He supported all his technical assistance from his uh, broadcasting studio. So, Professor Tonmai Kundu, a special thanks for you. And a special thanks uh, for Tarok Khara, Midnapur College, for his technical assistance, preparation of the flyer and certificates. And Last but not the least, I must thank and my uh, sincere uh, love, affection to all my uh, students of the college and the students of other colleges and all the participants and listeners who have patiently listened to this uh, extensive and elaborate lecture series. And with this, I declare the end of this program today on behalf of Department of Physiology, Midnapur College and Physiological Society of India. Thank you so much. Now, there is none to thank uh, Dr. Vishuddha. So we can uh, stop recording now. Yes. <laughs>